I got you, man. Well, bud, it's always great to come back to a place where you found success. You won here before. How's the weekend been for you? It's been a little bit up and down, uh, you know, trying to get the, the right balance and speed out of the Kroger Click list. Chevy. It's been, been a little bit of a challenge, but uh, made some good changes going into qualifying to, uh, to make it the second round of qualifying inside the top ten. Obviously, uh, the Gibbs cars and uh, Chase has been really fast. Kyle's always fast here, Kyle Larson. So, got the work cut out for us. We're, uh, we might play a little bit of strategy, but, uh, you know, we get up there with, uh, with ten, five laps to go. I'll make something happen. Oh, I don't doubt it. Let, but just be right to my second question. You can't come to a road course without your name being listed as a favorite. What makes you so good on these road courses? I mean, some of it's my background. It's what I grew up doing. Uh, you know, guys are short track racers. They're really good at short tracks and, and things like that. This is what, what my nature's been. I think a driver can make more of a difference on a road course. Uh, what gets playing is tough. It's kind of a, a super speedway of road courses. So, down force and... and Motor is a, is a big deal oh, here, and, and everybody's so good in the Cup well, Series now. So uh, that gap has shrunk like a little bit, but I still feel like uh, when we're at our best as a race team, I'm at my best. I got so there beat anybody. Yes. Well, but we'd like to wish you good luck and say thank you for taking the time to talk to the fans right before you go into battle. I know they appreciate it. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for everything you do. Packed out here. Walking to Glenn, as always. Pretty awesome. Absolutely. And, of course, as we're sitting here riding along with A.J. Allmendinger, he has the Kroger Click List on board. And he also has this great camera, which is the right front bumper, right on the front of the bumper of this car. We're going to see that perspective. Well, another great perspective is this. This is the Ford Performance onboard camera. Those are the feet of Kevin Harvick. They will be busy. It's only seven turns, but those feet will be busy to get all the shifting done today. We're going to be looking right back at Joey Logano with the Coca-Cola onboard camera. He is starting in the sixth position today. Starting in the second row, the fourth position. Martin Truex Jr. with the Toyota onboard camera. This camera right here shoots out the right side of Truex's car. We're going to see some other vehicles, perhaps some Armco as he goes up through the S's. It's going to be a great shot. All right, Steve, let's break down this track. Well, you heard AJ talk about it, strategy, and it all comes because of the way this race gets broken down. When you look at this track, we've talked about it, seven turns, a two-and-a-half-mile road course, 90 laps, a little over 220 miles. The first and second stage, both 20 laps in length. And that final stage, though, that's the long one, Rick, 50 laps. They cannot make that final stage on fuel. They can only go about 33 to 35 laps. All right, it's time for today's Subway Fresh Take. Let's find Rutledge Wood. Rick, I am here on the infield on top of the tower suites right after turn one as the cars are heading up the hill to the S's. And the great thing is I've got an incredible view, but I want to show you the view from the helicopter that really shows you exactly what these drivers are going to deal with going up the hill. First off, the reason that we call it the S's are because they are just that. It's a series of left, right, left, right turns. It looks like the letter S linked together. You're going to see Mike Bagley over there. Then as they head up the hill, they're going to go to what they call the inner loop or the bus stop. They call it that because it actually looks like you're pulling over to stop the bus, just like Mr. Swafford that picks up my daughter for school now if you miss that turn you got to come to a complete stop then you head up through the carousel they call it that because it's just like the carousel you used to ride as a kid at the fair the real question is are you going to pick the horse that looks like a real horse or maybe a tiger or are you going to end up looking like a donkey coming out of there sideways sideways dale jr is going to be up there calling all that action but those are some of the names you're going to hear as they're rolling through this track putting on a great show for a packed house here and then we got turn six they call it that because it's the sixth turn seven and then back to you guys rick on the front stretch that's a pretty good lap I'm impressed. I mean, who knew you could get that many animals in a description of walking sled? <laughs> he just did it. And it, this is one of the great tracks where a lot of strategy will come into play and so many storylines that are coming into play, as well as there are just five races to go until the playoffs. For more of the storylines, let's check Rick, back in with Marty Snyder. Rick, there have been some fantastic road course racers in the Cup Series over the years, from Terry Levani to Rusty Wallace, Wallace, Wallace to Jeff so Gordon and Tony Stewart. So who is the well, new road course king? Well, at Martin Truex Jr., he's, he's won two in a row at the road courses. He told me this week it really should be three or four in a row. Their biggest key here, how good they are on old tires at the end of the run, and that will be huge today, Dave, 90-degree day here in Watkins Glen. Marty, Kyle Larson needed to work something out of his system. It was going through the inner loop or the bus stop, 
and not using the curbing and using the turns, actually blowing it, as they say. So yesterday in practice, he did it three times during the Xfinity race, which ended an engine failure, unfortunately for him. He got it right, and his crew hopes today he makes the bus stop every Kevin time. Harvick Kelly? Kevin Harvick is already having a career year with six wins on the season and plenty of races left ahead. But this team told me they're not anywhere near being done. They'd like to win 10 races or more this season, and you have to respect Harvick's chances here at the Glen. He's one of just three drivers in this field to have won more than once on a road course race. All right, admittedly, though, they do have a little work cut out for him. Kevin Harvick qualified 15th, Rick. Yeah, he's got a ways to go if he wants to catch up, but strategy comes into play for every single driver and team here. It could help him out. It could hurt him today. Denny Hamlet starts up front. Green flag we come back. It's simple. Simple and true. Can world-renowned artist Red Hong Yi use the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank, all while creating a masterpiece made of tea leaves? Yes, but this isn't for just anyone. It's for the strongest man in her life. Life lived Red's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. We live Latour with the NBC Sports Gold Cycling Pass and continue watching live as the Peloton heads to Paris. It's all live, commercial free, and on demand. Start streaming now at NBCSportsGold.com. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. On Sunday nights this fall, it's all eyes on. Because this isn't just a game. This is Sunday Night Football on NBC. NASCAR Drive is your live race day companion. You can even watch multiple angles at once. Never miss a lap with NASCAR Drive. Visit NASCAR.com slash drive, or you can download it at NASCAR mobile app. The super speedway of road horses. We've seen some big wrecks there. There are trouble spots around this track that the drivers will have to deal with. If you don't do everything right, the little things will bite you and turn into a great big problem. I'm too old for this. It hurts too much. Big crash, bud. Got dumped. Be done. Oh, you stop with stuff. No spin, go high. Right front, tore up pretty bad. Aaron Nance, he'll go, then we'll go camp at the nine. Two by two, working their way around this racetrack, and we just saw how many areas around the track that can cause problems for these drivers. It is such a fast road course. It truly is the super speedway of road course racing. There are not a lot of slow corners. Turn one perhaps is the slowest, but there are straightaways at over 175 miles an hour into heavy braking zones and just not a lot of room. When there's an accident, it usually collects multiple cars. We've seen some huge impacts. Like the calm before the storm right here, Rick. I was trying to catch my breath. Uh, yeah, you need Waiting. to. I was, I was so, breathing in what's about to happen here. These drivers need to do the same thing, catch your breath. It may only seem like 90 laps. That may seem like a short race, but we heard Kyle Busch in the pre-race show talk about how it's grueling in this heat it. 90 yeah. laps will be. This way Things happen so really. quickly here. They're going to get the green flag, accelerate as quick as they can, and then be slamming on the brakes because that is one of the first passing zones. Turn one as they go downhill into turn one. It's Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch making up row one. Hamlin in the 11, Kyle Busch in the 18. We're on the lead from the Glen. Denny Hamlin, that's a great start. On the inside, heading into turn number one. Kyle Busch might be fighting for that second spot. Yes, please. I would rather Coming up on the inside, 15. here comes Chase Elliott. They're headed your way. Looking Mike three Bigley. wide for a moment. Kyle Busch has to back away. It's Denny Hamlin trying to hang on to the lead, but it's Chase Elliott to the outside, side by side for the lead for just a moment. Hamlin pulls away with the lead, but Chase Elliott stalks his every move. 
as they exit turn number four. Heading into the interlude, Kyle Busch looks out to the Oh, he's going for a pass on Chase Elliott. What a move. Incredible restart by Chase, but now he's back to third as they come out of the interlude. Everybody gets through their A-OK. -okay. Into the carousel. Awesome action so far as this race gets underway. Now they head down the back straight away. You can see Denny Hamlin did a great job. Kyle Busch with the fastest car all week. He's going to have to defend here quickly. Kyle's going to look to the inside, put some pressure on him. Try to roll to the 11 car off turn seven to build momentum to try to beat him down into turn one. And challenging for that spot. Here comes Kyle Busch. He looked to the outside, trying to set up Denny Hamlin as they come down the front stretch. Now he looks to the inside. Hamlin blocks. He moves to the inside. Hard on the brakes. Denny Hamlin trying to stay in front of that 18. Smoke coming out from behind the 11. Now he goes to the inside. Yes, he Here comes Kyle Busch for the lead. Hamlin swings way okay. wide out of one. That opens the inside line for Kyle Busch, and Kyle slips. Look three wide again for just a moment. Hamlin's able to hang on to the top spot. Yeah. Hamlin to the 11, back to the lead. Yeah, it's it's down, Kyle Busch in the 18th yeah. third. And now Chase Elliott under fire for Mark Truex Jr. for third. Unbelievable racing at the start of this event. Sideway, side by side into the inner loop. You just don't see guys make that work. Still side by side on the exit. Kyle Busch is fighting so hard to take the lead here from Denny Hamlin as they go through the carousel. Oh! Denny Hamlin checks up and all the field has to check up behind him as they come out of the carousel. Not sure there went a little bit of contact there. Jr. Hit Mark the Jr. Yeah. has used all of this momentum to catch on these guys time, all the way up to third. Caught them side by side up through the S's. Took advantage of them. Now he's want. on attack trying to take around. Trouble, trouble right in front of me. Joey Logano in the sand. Did not make contact. Want. Keeps rolling. He's going to stay on that path to keep him getting buried in the sand. Still keeps the car rolling. No contact. He's good. It's going to be okay. Just and Jeff, you guys talked about that contact. You guys talked about that contact. It always happens when there's a chain reaction. When Logano got damage on the nose, you saw him not able to turn the car going into that corner. Fortunately, he's able to make it to the corner. Fortunately, he's able to make it to the corner. He's already here in his pit stall. They're going to assess the damage on the 22. But it's early damage. And a chain reaction accident on the racetrack. 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 You see the damage on the nose and the hood. The 20, this is an aerodynamic track as fast as it is. That will affect the handling. So as Jeff called, I don't think he got damage going in the sand. The damage was right here in the carousel. As the whole field stacks up, you see right here, the 42 checks up. Heavy contact between Joey Logano and Kyle Larson. He was running in the sixth position, and then as he goes down into turn six underneath Jeff Burton, the car goes straight. We'll have to keep an eye on the 22 to see what kind of repairs they can make as the race goes on. Still out front, Kyle Busch now has Renee, almost the second lead over Mark Truex Jr. DVD. running second. Uh, Chase Elliott DVD. third, Denny Hamlin fourth, Kyle Larson, Kyle Larson is fifth, A.J. Allmendinger running in the sixth position. And around goes Eric Almirola. He had a little contact. Almirola in turn seven gets turned around and backs the 10 into the wall. Caution will come out. Caution, caution, caution. So aggressive early on. And we see Almirola and a lot of damage to the right rear of that car. Well, you mentioned contact, Rick. It looked to me, you called it correct when it was live. Ryan Blaney inside the 10 of Almirola. I'm not sure Eric knew he was there. He ran the 12 onto the curb. Blaney had nowhere to go. Contact with the 10. He spins around. Heavy damage to the tail of Eric. Well, Watkins Glen is an awesome racetrack. An historic racetrack for America and all motorsports. It all starts right here, front straightaway. Pretty long front straightaway. You can see on the left side, there's several cones and markers. Those are your braking zones. You want to try to be right out by the grass onto this braking zone. In second gear, get all the way to the curb. A lot of grip leaving this corner. Try to stay off of that curb on the right. Now the S is going to give up a little bit of speed on corner entry so that I can get my line where it needs to be right against the curb and then carry great speed up here through the S's. It, car gets very light right here, easy to get into that guardrail on the right and then up on top of the hill, it's easy to get in the grass right there. Now I'm coming to the inner loop where so much happens. Heavy braking zone, go down to second gear, use all the curb, all of this curb and this curb and this curb, they just never quit. 
And then this long carousel, which is so important, got to be right on the bottom. It's big to carry speed here because if you can get a good run on this corner exit, it leads to a very long trade away, a great passing zone. This is a late breaking corner. The third gear, you're going to wait a little bit, downshift into second. Again, get onto this curve, use a lot of this one actually, drift out. Now it's tough because you got to get all the way back to the left and then a quick turn back to the right. So, not the most technical road course by any means, guys, but it's very tough. It's going to be fun to watch this race. Can world renowned artist Red Hongi use the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank? Yes, but this isn't just for anyone. Chase, make more of what's yours. Rise for the Premier League, beginning Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN. Beginning Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN. Their flight disappeared five years ago. Today, it landed, and they haven't aged a day. From executive producer Robert Zemeckis, Manifest. Mondays this fall on NBC. It's going to the garage. Marty, what's well, going Rick, on with the 22? Well, Rick, first of all, Joey Logano, well, Rick, all, Joey Logano was Todd done Gordon for the day. You see, he and Todd Gordon talking to NASCAR officials. Let's back up to the accident. When that accident happened, they, they, broke, an happened, cooler they broke an oil cooler between in the 22 car. Between that time and when they got back to the garage area, because their pit stall was so close to the garage area, NASCAR put them on the damn oil cooler. 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 NASCAR put them on the damn oil
No food on the track there for the drivers on the Jeff Burton. They're very aggressive racing early in this race. Chase Elliott there in that nine car. He's had a fast car all weekend. You got to know he's thinking, what in the heck, guys? It's early in this race. It's calmed down just a little bit, but that's Watkins Glen. We're going to see it all day. Again, Kyle Busch, Martin Trucks Jr. up front, but Denny Hamlin trying to hold off the hard charging. Number nine of Chase Elliott, Eric Jones just behind him. Two young drivers trying to make a name for themselves. Eric Jones got a win this year. Problem is, Chase Elliott hasn't got that win yet. Still looking for his first career win in the Monster Energy Cup Series. Toyota, Chevy, Toyota, third, fourth, and fifth. The 11 of Hamlin, the 9 of Elliott. Then you got the 20 of Eric Jones. Then this is the battle for the number three position. They've actually legged it out now over Ryan Blaney in the 12, who rides in the sixth position. Kyle Busch is gone. The battle is back in the third between Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott. Chase keeping pace with Denny. Denny, little mistake there in the center of the inner loop. Allows Chase to stay right on him through the carousel. Chase right on him, giving him good pressure here. Heads up to Jeff Burton. See Denny Hamlin, he opened up his exit a little bit, didn't pitch the car off, and that helped him down this long back straightaway, get away from Chase Elliott. Chase is faster in the center of the corners. Denny Hamlin knows that. He's actually checking Chase up just a little bit, slowing him down and accelerating on corner exit. The big gap in front of the 11 of Denny Hamlin indicates that he's holding up Chase Elliott. When will Chase Elliott take advantage of the back bumper of the 11 to let him know that he's back there and ready to go. He doesn't take advantage of it here. As they go sure. through turn number one, he works his way in the tire oh, tracks of the 11 of Denny Hamlin, staying right yeah. there in that position, yeah. still fighting for third. Chase Elliott pretty aggressive right now, climbing the hill through turn number three, trying to keep Denny Hamlin at arm's length. Here they come now out of turn number four. It's Hamlin and Elliott racing for yeah. third up the back straightaway. Chase Elliott, he's close enough to try to look out and pressure Hamlin into a mistake in that breaking zone. You see him move out, trying to get Danny off his game. Danny off his game. Chase is right on there. Look at the pressure he's putting here in the, in the carousel. Danny, though, holds a pretty line. Doesn't make any mistakes, so Chase That's doesn't get a run. Right do yeah, he's doing such a good job of holding the center of the corner on the bottom and accelerating off. We saw David Reagan spin in turn one. You heard him say it will hop it. No caution. He continued on. Great battle staying between these two. Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, and now Eric Jones in the 20, closing the gap. Those three cars all fighting for one position. Chase Elliott gets out of line and... Looking for a little fresh air, clean air as he comes into turn number one, back into that hard braking zone, the hard right-hander. And Denny Hamlin now with a three-car link lead over Elliott. They lead turn one, downhill to turn two. Denny Hamlin starting to leg it out now over Chase Elliott. Eric Jones there making that a three-car fight. That's positions three, four, and five as they cross over into turn number four. Chase Elliott backing away now, but now peeking to the inside out of four. Chase Elliott not close enough again into the interlude, but man, he's making a great time here in the interlude. There's his father, Bill Elliott, spotting over here in the interlude. I can see Bill from where I'm at. Chase really makes a lot of ground through there yeah, and is able to close so up on Denny in the carousel. But up through the end, just isn't able to stay there to attack in the breaking zone. This is a great example of how lap, better lap time doesn't necessarily mean a better racing race car. I bet if Chase Elliott got in front of Denny Hamlin, he could get away from him. But Denny is strong in the areas. Chase is going to make an aggressive move. We saw this not work. Beach desire to back out. Nice, smart move. That is a very dangerous place to try to pass. Yeah, I think Chase in the nine needs to be a little patient to save some brakes. Remember, there's still 81 laps to go. You saw earlier David Reagan ended up spun around in turn one. Here's what happened on the brakes hard looks like it maybe wheel hopped a little bit the 38 spun the 17 of ricky stenhouse spun the 38 was running 19 ricky stenhouse in 18 both spun down into turn one but they recovered rick pulled away and joined the field still out front kyle bush has a two and a half second lead over martin trex jr you're not going to miss a thing as we go fast car non-stop yeah. introducing the new 2018 ford f-150 investing class towing Best in class payload and best in class tour. The F 150 lineup has the capability to get big things to big places big time. Things just got bigger. F 
I relate the berries in these real fruit berry shakes because they're small but powerful. I relate to the ice cream because it's rich and has an amazing singing voice. Got it. Real ice cream and berries. New real fruit berry shakes. Get them half price after 8 p.m. for a limited time. When it's too cold for camping, we go camping. When it's too hot to work, we work. Too wet to keep going? Nah. This is the Gator XUV835 with game-changing heat and air and three wide seating. It's never too anything for anything. Nothing runs like a deer. Get $400 off the Gator XUV835M at any participating John Deere dealer. Best tailgate, brisket. No, real football. Y pollo asado. Oops, and wings, dude. Subs. Hot dogs. Chili dogs. No, Dodger dogs. It's gotta be crawfish. Oh, now you're talking burgers. Seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Um, what? You need a hot grill and an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke, come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day. Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. Grab yourself a Coke. It's tailgate 101. Come away with me, Barnabas. But I am a simple farmer. My life is here. In, in the big... Hoy, hoy, Alexander Graham Bell here. No, no, my number is one. You must want two. Two, I say. Like my father. As long as people talk too loudly on the phone, you can count on Geico saving folks money. Fifteen minutes could save you fifteen percent or more on car insurance. Ta -ta -ta -ta. What are you doing? I'm enjoying the American classical. The American classic, all American dog and tots for two ninety nine. Enjoy the all American dog and tots. Give me that. Hurry in to try the all American dog or chili cheese coney with tots for just two ninety nine. Take a look at today's track backs brought to you by Mobile One. Strategy definitely coming into play, and it could happen quick. It does. It comes very early. So basically, I think the two main choices you have to make here at Watkins Glen, are you going to pit twice or three times? We've seen since 2011, the winner has either come on a two- or a three-stop strategy. So you look, it comes very quickly. As you said, either way, I expect to see the leaders hit pit road at lap 17, right before the end of stage one, come get their service before the yellow comes out. Decision time is are you going to stop again? If you're on a three-stop strategy, you stop at lap 37, right before the end of stage two. If not, then everyone's final stop, Marty, I expect to see somewhere in the lap 55 range, depending on how good they think their car is, and perhaps more importantly, how good they think their fuel mileage is. Strategy is going to be a big factor today. Joey Logano out of the infield care center. And first of all, what happened on the track, and then your interpretation of what happened when you came to the garage area. They say you violated the damage vehicle policy. I don't really know the policy and how it's supposed to work. <laughs> it's technically my job to understand that. But um, on the racetrack, just, we're just racing hard and, um, you know, they're trying to make a run off a carousel uh, on Larson and trying to keep the nose on it into the bus stops. I saw they're all racing in front of me really hard and thought I could try to, you know, make a run and get some momentum off the carousel. And I was right on Larson. I think they checked up in front of him and he lifted and I was right there. And, uh, my, I guess I, my bumper bar went underneath his bumper, I guess, and just knocked into the to the radiator and then and, and punctured a hole in it. So it um, didn't take much. Um, kind of the same issue we had last week. So uh, we just got to figure out how to make the car a little bit more durable or we got to <laughs> race it like it's an Indy car and get away from everyone. I don't know. Either way, we just got to, uh, I don't know, it's a stop the last two weeks. We've had trouble early in the race. So um, I felt like I had a car that could maybe run with these guys today. And uh, unfortunately, the Shell Penzo Ford's behind the wall. And that'll be it. So we went from here to zero pretty quick, didn't I? You can understand the frustration from Joey Logano after winning yesterday. He will finish last here today. And only the second time in his career that he's ever finished last. So a difficult day for Joey Logano. We saw earlier how David Reagan and the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. had 
problem in turn one while he's having a few more issues. Yeah, he gets to the left side of the grass off the top of the that. that is a dangerous place to leave the asphalt. He's lucky he didn't get into an accident. Now he has to be concerned about the temperature. Look at that lower grill of the 34 of Michael McDowell. Debris on the 14 of Clint Boyer as they come through. Other cars, Kevin Harvick. These drivers are going to have to really watch those gauges. The 17 actually had to come to pit road and clean it off. You know, at some point, Rick, you just have to say, you know what, take your medicine, come to pit road. Uh, it's unfortunate. The rest of these grills look a little bit better. There's Michael Dow right there, and the, the grill looks a little cleaner. First stage, 20 laps. There's six laps to go in that. But before they come in for the stage ending, you're saying that a lot of guys are going to be coming to pit road around lap 17, so maybe in about three laps. Yeah, nothing new. We saw this at Sonoma. It's basically going to be a decision, Dale, whether you want stage points or no stage points. But why we wait to see who pits? Why don't we ride along with what I think the coolest camera is? Dale Jr., take us for a ride with Kevin Hart. Absolutely. Kevin Harvick, great race car driver. Allowed us to use these awesome camera angles to see the feet. Now he's using the pedals in the car today. He's coming through the carousel. A little bit of brake here. A little bit of throttle. Very easily on the throttle here, trying to get that forward bite. Once he realizes he has it, full throttle. Quick shift in the third gear. Won't go to fourth there. Now shift into second real quick. Not a hard breaking zone there, but initially it is. Standard right hand corner here. Trying to get that forward bike down and again hard on the throttle as soon as he understands where the grip is in the back of the car where the drive off is. This is really hard. See pumping that brake, getting that brake pumped up and getting all four tires ready to apply pressure properly so he doesn't wheel hop into the corner. You don't pump the brake. Sometimes you can hammer hammer the brake pedal and the brakes on the front have faded somewhat. So you got really strong rear brakes and that can get you get your wheel hopping into turn one. So pumping that pedal can sort of prime the system up so all yeah, four yeah, the tires are, are braking properly together. Wheel hopping potentially is much yeah, less. On the Same thing down here into the inner loop. Pop that pedal just a little bit and pump up the, the brakes and get them ready. That's a very hard braking zone. You'll be pumping the pedal all day into that one. Uh, I'm going to tell you, the man of the move. Kurt Busch right here. He started the back of the pack. And he has driven up to 16. So he is coming up from the back very well. He's a really good road racer. This guy can drive a race car on a road course. We know how good he is everywhere else as well. One thing he's going to have to be a little bit careful of is he's driving up through the front. He's having to use a lot of brakes. So he's got himself in pretty good position right now, but he's going to have to take care of these brakes a little bit. It's a heavy braking area, but a really good job right Jeff, here. That's a push. terrific point. Jeff, that's, that's a terrific the point. Race. Talking to Kurt before the race. That's one thing you said. If I had a win this year at Watkins, you're right. He's a very good run for a He said I used too much brakes early in the race. So starting deep in the field like this, through the field, but he's been very impressive through the field, but he's been very impressive now. Up for Kurt Busch for the car, for Kurt Busch for the car, a little bit tight. I have a feeling Kurt Busch about here. to get very busy down here. Yeah, one thing you saw Kurt do right there, he wasn't in position to make that move on Ryan Newman in a 31 car. He just went to the right and said, "Hey, I'm here. I want this Nine, spot." Nine, ten, Trying to get Ryan to think about it and maybe make a mistake and take advantage of it. Well, that's Kurt Busch. His brother Kyle Busch leads this oh, race with about a three-second lead. So we mentioned we expect to see cars on pit road lap 17. That's what lap they're coming to now. The reason is is because they closed pit road with two to go. Kyle could technically stay out because he's the leader. He can come to pit road the next lap. I expect the cars behind him right here to come to pit road this lap. So here's Kyle. He goes by. We see a few decide to stay on the track, but here we go. Danny Hamlin, the 9 of Chase Elliott, the 20 of Eric Jones. We continue to show this picture. We're going to continue to see the same thing. 42 of Larson. Here you go. They keep coming. Blaney, busy on pit road, Marty. Chase Elliott, first of those cars. He has a very early pit stall. You're going to see him change the right all the way at the exit is Denny Hamlin, and this 11 car, he started off just way too tight, and then his car was even chattering for those first couple of laps. His team choosing to set themselves up strategy-wise for the big picture, Marty. This is the Ryan team that wants to open the win. Ryan Blaney leading pit road. He told us before the race, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, pretty pretty good. Up in the top six for Ryan Blaney. Up in the top car. six for Ryan Blaney. Too free, Kelly. Kelly. Was a little bit too free, Kelly. And there you see Kevin Harvick. And there you see Kevin Harvick in that Ford car. They have just completed their service as well. Kevin Harvick looking for his third road course win. Four tires for the Ford. Don't even know 
All right, so as I mentioned, now the 18 of Kyle Busch can come because he's leading. So Pat Rose not close. You have a big decision. 78 of Martin Trent Jr. stays on the racetrack. He says, you know what's more important than pit strategy? A stage point. I'm going to stay on the racetrack. Dave? Kyle comes to his pit box. He'll look for four fresh Goodyear tires and a Phillips Sunoco fuel. His only thought on the race car as he talked to his crew chief was a little bit loose leaving. That's next to the corners. Everything else is pretty good. He's working in the opposite direction this weekend. Looking good so far for the 18 bucks. He'll get service and go. And what Dave said, they're working in the opposite direction. Normally the cars will come to the crew from their right, yeah. and they will be jumping out in front of the car, changing the tires, going to the other side of the car, changing the tires, putting fuel in. So this is completely different because the cars are now coming from their left here at Watkins Glen. Just one more thing to complicate the road course. So a quick update. This they is the race leader, the 78 of Martin Truex right Jr. To coming two. to one to go. He wants to get that playoff point for winning the stage. Jimmy Johnson running second. Why did he stay on the racetrack? I think it purely comes down to the playoff picture. Remember, he's only about 100 above the playoff picture. He needs points. He'll get nine this. points for finishing second. William Byron has the same idea in third. We knew there were going to be priorities. Decisions were going to have to be made. I really love this choice by Chad Kanowski. We look at Jimmy Johnson came in only 107 above. That seems like a lot, Rick. But we just saw Joey Legato. He's going to finish last, right? Anything can happen. Points can go away very quickly. Look at the standings. There are the playoff points as they start the final lap of stage one. Look, he's at plus 128 where he currently Jimmy runs. Johnson is saying, I can't you know, it's this balance. This is what stages have done to crew chiefs. They have to decide a priority. It is we see the final lap running. Look, all these guys are going to lose track position because when this... Green and white checker flag is up, Kelly. They'll come to pit road. Yeah, and how about this test for the 48 of Jimmy Johnson? They're telling him to keep his teammate William Byron behind him. The only problem, Jimmy Johnson's rear view mirror inside the cockpit, the giant rear view mirror they put over these road course races has fallen off. He just said, I can't see anything. Man, it bouncing I was going to say, I think I can see it moving. You look kind of behind the windshield wiper. It moves up and down. That's something that they're going to lose track position anyway. It's going to be interesting to see if they want to fix that. Yeah, that right there, I mean, for a drive on a road course where you have to block on corner entry under braking, that is a huge disadvantage to not have a mirror. And Martin Truex Jr. keeps his winning ways going as he will win stage one at Watkins Glen. He won a year ago the race and won at Sonoma earlier this year. The battle continuing for position here between the 11 of Denny Hamlin and the 9 of Chase Elliott. Those two fighting for a spot as they come straight at Jeff Burton in turn six. No, that, that Denny good, Hamlin yeah, no still holding on to that position. These two have been fighting for spots all day long. Chase Elliott working the high side. Can't get by the 11. Now he crosses him over. Looking to the inside. A drag race as they come to the finish line. Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, and Hamlin. Nose is just in front of Elliott. And again, Every point matters. They're fighting for points to be in the top ten. Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Watkins Glen. This telecast presented by Applebee's. World-renowned artist Red Hongyu used the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank. Yes, but this isn't just for anyone. Chase, make more of what's yours. Welcome. Hi there. So what do you look for in a vehicle? Sleek designs. Performance. Dependability is top on my list. Well, then here's some vehicles that deliver on that. Whoa. Wow. Jeez. That's our truck. It's our truck! And there are cars! That's my Chevy! Chevy's the only brand to have earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs three years in a row. Awesome and proud. You know, it's like a dynasty. It's impressive. When injuries ravaged Ken's team, he went out and found the next big name player in little known running back Kiko Jones Parker, Jankovic Jones Parker the third. Feel the winds, Kenneth. And here it comes, the closer, Kevin Harvick, puts on a clinic. Austin Dillon wins a 
very emotional victory. There's the ace. Bubba Wallace in second. Here's Kyle. Gonna take a bow. And they cut it. Wallace into the bottom of the drive. Here comes the 18. He puts the all my back. You don't know, like that kind of racing? Don't even watch. Martin Truex Jr. The champ is back in victory lane. How fitting. How special. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Go Bowling. Go to GoBowling.com to find a center near you. Miller Highlight. Champagne of Beers. Subway Restaurants. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the Beast. Well, the party is going to move from here at Watkins Glen to Michigan International Speedway next weekend. Great camping there, affordable adult ticket prices, special kids pricing, and free parking. Who doesn't love free parking? All you have to do, visit NASCAR.com slash tickets to purchase tickets today. Fastest track on the circuit, Rick. Such a blast when you go up to the Irish Hills. Let's take a look at this mirror that's falling out of Jimmy's car. If you look there. Bouncing around in there as he goes through the interlude, that's pretty much renders that thing useless. I mean, it's it's nothing he can use. He won't be able to see as guys are starting to challenge him in the breaking zones of the interlude. His crew chief doesn't want to make the change or the fix because it takes a lot of time and you lose, use a lot of track position doing that. Marty. Hey, guess who won this race last year? Martin hey, guess who won this race last year? Martin Truex Jr. Cole Byrne using the same exact strategy today. They run Get the full stage, stage here. They'll stay Get out that to that about lap 55. Win. They'll stay out to about lap 55. I see more Truex overall grip. I see That's more right. overall grip. That's right. Biggest complaint. They're going to do that with air pressure for fresh Goodyear tires. They're going to get air pressure for fresh Goodyear tires. They're going to get opposite way of pitting here on pit road, Kelly. So in order to not lose time here on pit road, the team is going to hand the And world-renowned artist Red Hongyu used the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank? Yes, but this isn't just for anyone. Chase, make more of what's yours.
It's the Goat Bowling at the Glen. And it has been an interesting first stage already. Now tomorrow, this Ninja Warrior overcame his own struggles to help inspire others. Be there for the emotional run that will have America cheering. Emmy nominated American Ninja Warrior. That's tomorrow night on NBC. And the driver of the 13, Ty Dillon, is actually going to be competing on that show as well. Let's take a look at the Toyota Camry on-track car, and we'll check in with Rutledge Wood. Rick, when you're looking at this Toyota on-track car, you really notice the splitter down here because when the guys are driving over that bus stop, you see so violently they hit this thing so hard. Steve, I'm wondering, how can they keep the nose protected when you saw it? There with Joey Logano, he barely had an impact, and it seemed like it shook that oil cooler loose. How do you do that dance when cars are jumping over that spot so hard every single lap? Well, as you see right here with the 11 going over it, I think the whole key is to hit him relatively straight. You just can't drop whatever your inside tires are to the grass. That's the big drop-off. So as long as you have two tires on the asphalt or on the curbing, the other two tires on the curbing, the splitter has a chance to, see, to survive. If you ever get put out in the grass, though, Rut, that splitter may be the first thing that goes. All right, so all of the cars have been to pit road. They have taken care of this first part of the strategy. I'm going to let you have a little bit of a break. I want to bring in the guys that are out around the track, including MRN, Sirius XM Radios, Mike Bagley. He's in the S's, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Burton. Mike, what have you seen so far? I've seen a lot of aggression, Rick, and that surprises me. Normally, this is one of the more tame portions of Watkins Glen. The drivers want to go through here single file. They've been toying with three wide, having to back away. Normally, you don't see them go through here double wide. That Chase Elliott-Denny Hamlin battle, man, that's been epic. A lot of aggression here in the S's. What about you, Dale Jr.? Any aggression down there at your portion of the racetrack? Yeah, the first couple laps were pretty wild. Uh, had, they had energy level way up, but... As things started to string out, there were some great battles. You talked about Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, those guys fighting it out. That's been fun to watch. Really, everybody through the field. And it's been great also to see the strategy that these guys are using to take take stage points or to or to put themselves up in position to win. Jeff? Yeah, yeah that battle you guys keep talking about with Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott, that's just started. It's going to continue. And then also the climb up through the field by Kurt Busch. He's now in 11th place, Kelly. All right, we talked about Jimmy Johnson's mural. Here was the discussion on how to fix it. We probably don't need to make lose any spots or anything messing with this, okay? Yeah, if you just hand it to me, I'll figure it out. No problem. Would you like a roll of duct tape as well? Need just a nut driver. No uh problem. -huh. Give me a nut driver. And Andy Speak Flip. We'll give it to you both at the same time. Okay, so unfortunately, Jimmy has not been able to fix that rear view mirror, so they're just going to move on without it. It's up to his spotters now around the track to act as a rear view mirror for him. And Chad Knauss, his crew chief, just saying, hey, you don't need a rear view mirror. Keep your eyes forward. You're doing great. And once again, the field approaching the Geico restart zone. It's Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin once again up front. Up through the gears again, but then hard onto the brakes as they go into turn one. And once again, here comes Chase Elliott working to the inside. Elliott trying to take the lead as they come out of turn number one, all over the back bumper of the 18. Kyle Bush slipped just a tad coming out of turn number one. So did Denny Hamlin. That left the lane open for Chase Elliott in the nine car. It'll be Elliott going to the number two position. Here are teammates, the 11 of Hamlin, the 20 of Eric Jones. They are side by side for third as they exit turn four. The leaders are driving away, but back there in third is a great battle between teammates side by side into the inner loop. Denny Hamlin takes the position from Jones as the rest of the field snakes through. Behind Jones is McMurray. Teammates, Jamie McMurray and Larson going through the carousel there. Look at those cars battling side by side through the carousel back in the pack. A battle right here, Chase Elliott, he's taking a look at Kyle Busch right on the rear bumper. Look how close he is to him. He's going to take a look right here in the seven. Side by side. Kyle Busch squeezes him. Tight battle coming to the start finish line. Kyle Busch still out front. Chase Elliott giving him everything he can right now as they're fighting for that top spot. Elliott has been so good through the carousel, making up that ground, looking for an opportunity to get by the 18. Still hasn't been able to do it as he heads up into turn two. Yeah, it's a game of me and my shadow right now between Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott. Up into 
turn two. Yeah, it's a game of me and my shadow right now between Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott. Those two have pulled away from the field. Chase Elliott, though, not letting Kyle Busch get away as of yet, trying to stay with him stride for stride, although he'll fade back by about two car lengths out of turn four. Chase not close enough to make a challenge. It's an interloop. Crowd popping the watch his own, and he spots him through this interloop. Battling for the lead. Look at Chase get loose in the center there. Fight hard for every bit of grip. He's got a great race car, and he's put the fight to the guy who we thought had the best car all weekend, Kyle Busch. And that's what you want. You want to beat the best guy right in front of Chase Elliott is what many people consider to be one of the best road racers. You have a chance to take it from him. I can promise you as a driver, he wants that in the worst way. He wants his first win, and he wants to do it against one of the best in the business. We saw Austin Bill of Dawsonville, his dad, back there spotting for him in the inner loop. He got his very first cup win at a road course. It was Riverside. And then went on to put together a Hall of Fame career. Chase Elliott still looking for that first win as he right in the tire tracks again there we saw a little smoke coming out of the 18 of kyle bush making a little mistake as he broke in turn one and rick Mike. i asked alan gustafson and rick, this morning i said if you ever thought morning, I said, if first win might come in a road course he said honestly no but he has gotten so much better he has gotten so much better he couldn't put the races together he's gotten better our cars have gotten better and even this car this weekend much better than the car we had this morning just a couple of weeks ago dave part of the advice that they're giving kyle bush is he makes a little bit of slip right there in the inner loop and here comes chase elliott he's going to try to get him in the carousel they told him the minute would fade back after four or five laps but with mistakes, that's not going to happen, Rick. Not at all. And coming out of the carousel, he was all over the back bumper again. Chase Elliott continues to dog that 18 so hard. Listen into the 18 radio. Just run your race. Let him push himself until he makes a mistake. There's nothing else coming. By three. Challenge for the lead. Here comes Elliott to the inside. The crowd on their feet. They're cheering as Elliott takes the lead at the Chase Elliott, new leader at Watkins Glen as he dives into turn number one. Now he has the 18 of Kyle Busch in his mirror. They come to the S's, watching this crowd of the S's go absolutely crazy right now. Chase Elliott around Kyle Busch. He's not only taken the lead, but he is pulled away by four car lengths up the back straightaway. Kyle Busch had to surrender the spot after all that pressure. He's hoping that the nine car will eventually just burn his car up. Is Chase pushing too hard? Is Chase going to be able to keep up this type of tempo, this type of pace? Kyle definitely was making those mistakes out front. He decided to move over, let Chase have the position. That's the thing. I don't think that Kyle Busch was taking it easy. We saw him lock the brakes up, getting into one. We saw him sideways through the interloop. It wasn't like... Kyle Busch just said, hey, I'm going to drive easy and let Chase Elliott take this lead. Chase Elliott grabbed him from it. It wasn't, hey, I'm just going to be easy. That was just great driving by Chase Elliott. Well, Jeff, and I have to think we might be looking at the 2018 most popular driver because when he took the lead, it was popular. So we see new guys at the front, Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch. Well, not just him. Look a little bit farther back, the 20 of Aaron Jones, the one of Jamie McMurray. That strategy has helped. Jamie McMurray currently running in the fifth position. Well, he was running around 10th at the first stage. He came up for the end of the stage break. That's how he gained his track position. You look a few cars behind him, the 78 of Mark Trex Jr., the car that decided to stay on the racetrack. He had to restart back at 12, currently running 11. Stay on Maybe the most popular driver in NASCAR right now. Well, he is number one with that fan right there. That's a nice sunburn. Put a spell on you. Yeah, because you're mine. With Chase ATMs, Serena can now grab cash on the go, all with the tap of her phone. Stop the things you do. No card, no problem. Life, live Serena's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. Welcome. Hi there. So, what do you look for in a vehicle? Sleek designs. Performance. Dependability is top on my list. Well, then here's some vehicles that deliver on that. Whoa. Wow. 
Oh, jeez. That's our truck. It's our truck. And they're our cars. That's my Chevy. Chevy's the only brand to have earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs three years in a row. Awesome and proud. You know, it's like a dynasty. It's impressive. Is this Harry Ambrose? Speaking. I read about your case with that woman. Uh, this isn't the best time. I'm sorry. I could really use a set of eyes on this. The reason it's the suspect. It's a kid? They were his parents. He was the only one seen going in and out of the room. He poisoned them. How's it being back? It's been a while. <laughs> There's no reason Julian would do something like this. He's told us already. He's confessed it. He's so far beyond anything you can understand. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Your own kid killing him. You went out behind the motel and picked some leaves. And you knew what would happen when they drank it. Yes. Olympic champion Simone Biles goes for a record fifth women's all-around national title as the Team USA Summer Champion Series presented by Xfinity continues with the U.S. Gymnastics Championships August 18th and 19th on NBC. NBC. Horizon IndyCar Series returns to NBCSN Sunday, August 19th. Racing to Pocono Raceworks. Scott Dixon, he's leading the point standings, but Will Power, the 500 champ, will be the driver to beat at Pocono. He's for his third straight at the Tricky Triangle. We're looking on there with A.J. Allmendinger. You see the damage on the front of that race car. Obviously, at a very high speed racetrack like this, over 180 miles an hour, that's going to affect the performance of this car. It's going to affect it, but they did a nice job of taping it up, Jeff. I'm not sure. I mean, it's definitely not as designed, but it looks like they've done a nice job of repairing that 47. Yeah, I think they have. It's just every little thing matters. And AJ Allmendinger right now, down in 20th, we would thought he could be able to charge up to the field a little better than that. But as you ride along, we went one of the very best road races, no doubt about it. Let's see how his approach is different than what we saw earlier with Kevin Harvick. So he's driving this carousel right now. You can see no gear change. Trying to hug that curb on the right side. He's actually on the curb. Some people stay off of it. Uses all the racetrack on the exit. Now into third gear. Now he's going to drive into turn six, a heavy braking zone initially. Then his trail brakes aren't coming off down into second gear. He saw he had a moment right there. Actually missed his marks way up the racetrack. Still in second gear, into seven, right-handed. Now he's on the front straightaway. You see a shift. Third gear. Downhill into turn one. This is why we see so many problems into turn one. It's downhill. The rear tires get light. You can, it's easy to wheel hop it. He downshift into second. Now he's going to upshift to third. A little bit of throttle off. Set yourself up for this corner. Now you hug the right side to set yourself up for the latter part of the S's to straighten it out the best you can. And this will lead you to that long back straightaway into the inner loop. And that's where we see the cars get upwards of 180 miles an hour as they get into the inner loop. We're going to get a few updates on other drivers around the course and we'll start with Kelly. As we look at that one of Damien McMurray, his crew chief Matt McCall used some strategy to get him up into the fifth position where they've held on and this team could use a good result. It's been five weeks since they've even had a top 15 finish but McCall told me that Jamie likes these road courses just because they're different. They require some finesse and some control right now. Jamie McMurray saying the biggest issue in that number one car is he's got a little bit of wheel hop especially in turn Kelly six. Was Honestly, I can tell you here Saturday is the Clint Boyer's Saturday, 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 Saturday,
top the road courses, a Dave. At the road courses, Dave. Daniel Suarez started today 96 points behind the cut line for the playoffs. But last week nearly won at Pocono. That gave the team some momentum they hoped they could carry here to Watkins Glen. For now, the driver who really needs a win to make the playoffs doesn't have the car that he needs. A little tight right there through the carousel. Difficult to turn. They hope to get that right before the day's over and give Daniel a chance. Daniel Suarez running 11th. Chase Elliott, he's up front. Could he win another stage? It'll be the third race in a row. You won't miss a thing as we go NASCAR nonstop. McDonald's new fresh beef quarter pounder has left Jimmy speechless. Mm. So here's Charles Barkley to speak for him. How they make a burger this terrific? Four words. Cook when you order. That's right. They don't cook it until little Jimmy tells them to. Little Jimmy doesn't see cheese that melty in a burger every day. And boy, is it juicy. Number one, right? Shh. Little Jimmy, don't talk with your mouth, folks. Sounds terrible. The new, hotter, juicier, fresh beef quarter pounder burgers. So good, they'll leave you speechless. Welcome. Hi there. So what do you look for in a vehicle? Sleek designs. Performance. Dependability is top on my list. Well, then here's some vehicles that deliver on that. Whoa. Oh, jeez. That's our truck. It's our truck. And there are cars. It's my Chevy. Chevy's the only brand to have earned JD Power Dependability Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs in three years in a row. Awesome. I'm proud. Oh, it's like a dynasty. It's impressive. Kevin here says Mobile One Annual Protection is proven to protect for 20,000 miles. It'll save you a lot of time. Dad, what all this extra time? Sorry, Lee. Kevin and I have a tea time at 11. Yeah, 20,000 miles guaranteed. Going, Mobile really One Annual time, Protection. You know? Some things should never change, like the crisp, cold, refreshing of the bush. But some things should, like Tim's impatience. Play dead or Tim. <laughs>
matched up. Use those fresh tires, try to gain back positions. As Marty pointed out, everyone, even those two cars, have to stop one more time for fuel. Chase Elliott getting ready to cross the start finish line. When he does, that closes pit road. Two laps to go in stage one. Chase Elliott looking for a stage win. Hasn't happened very often in 2018, but it has the last two races. So Chase Elliott, a little bit of a roll now as he goes into the S. Climbs the hill up to turn number three. This is going to put a smile on a lot of folks' faces. If Chase Elliott can hang on and pick up this stage win. He's leaving Kyle Busch in the dust. He's already hit set sail for the inner loop. Steadily just been a little bit quicker. Kyle Busch through this whole run. Chase has led four of the last five races. Before that, only two of the first 17. So these guys have found some speed in the Chevrolet. A Chevrolet, you hear that? Chevrolet, find a little speed today. Yeah, this is the Chase Elliott. I think we were all believe we would see when this year started. So much optimism about the new Camaro, but they just didn't run. And now they're starting to make gains. And Chase Elliott has dealt with the frustrations all year long. And sometimes those frustrations make you better. Hey, Marty, when you have an opportunity, you're a little you more hungry. And I think and it's a little more. And to see if Chase Elliott can close it out. Well, you mentioned so, Chevrolet. This is a fast racetrack. Race track. It tells me they may have made gains aerodynamically. Chase Elliott doing a wonderful job on the racetrack. Alan Gustafson calling a great strategy, sticking to their guns. One pit stop early, probably one pit stop later in the next stage as they take the white flag here for the last lap of stage two. Chase Elliott climbing the hill yet again, just trying to keep it back in, keep it in one straight line, make it back to the start finish line to get that win. He's been on cruise control for about the last 10 laps or so. Smooth lines and really pulling away and really in a zone right now, Dale. See his dad, Bill Elliott. Bill announcing this past week, this week, that he's going to be racing in the Xfinity race at Road America. Man, that made a lot of people happy on social media. I couldn't believe it when I read that. Exciting opportunity for that, but Chase doing it right now. Coming out of Carousel into six. Yeah, Road America's a road course, so Chase said, hey, Dad, here's how you do it. Now, this is a road course. This is how you're supposed to do it. Let's get out front and lead. Bill Elliott has taught Chase so many things growing up, and now Chase has an opportunity to teach Bill a little something. And I'm sure Chase is probably having so much fun running up front. Bill said, I want a little piece of that. 62-year-old Hall of Famer running at Road America. Well, young son Chase Elliott gets another stage win. Just a reminder, so he will Renee, win they will stage two hit. at Watkins Glen. Cool. Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin. He'll set up a crew chief uh, whip of interviews. Top three. They don't pit. Eric Jones, Mark Truex Jr. using this stage to get some track position after winning stage one. And now, Steve, the strategy that comes into play. So we won't see Chase Elliott on pit road. No, nope. we're going to have a caution. They have the option to pit. They're all going to stay on the racetrack because they're not yet in their fuel window to the end of the race. Chase Elliott. We talk about momentum. Could it be today when he gets his first cup win? Can world-renowned artist Red Hongyu use the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank? Yes, but this isn't just for anyone. Chase, make more of what's yours. for the Premier League, beginning Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are, whether you own a fantasy team or America's team. On Sunday nights this fall, it's all eyes on. Because this isn't just a game. This is Sunday night football. This is where Odell became a verb. Everyone, and I mean everyone, is watching. 
Seriously, AB, give Snoop a shout out. What's up, Snoop? AB, what it do? Told you. It's all eyes on Sunday Night Football. Racing fans, support your favorite drivers and gear up for NASCAR action with our huge selection of officially licensed NASCAR merchandise. Get all your NASCAR gear and apparel at shop.nbcsports.com. A fanatics experience. Is this Harry Ambrose? Speaking. I read about your case with that woman. Uh, this isn't the best time. I'm sorry. I could really use a set of eyes on this. The reason is the suspect. It's a kid? They were his parents. He was the only one seen going in and out of the room. He poisoned them. How's it being back? It's been a while. There's no reason Julian would do something like this. He's told us already. He's confessed it. He's so far beyond anything you can understand. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Your own kid killing him. You went out behind the motel and picked some leaves. And you knew what would happen when they drank it. Yes. Monster Energy Cup Series Racing. Watkins Glen. Telecast presented by Applebee's. Great week last week on NASCAR America. You can tune in five o'clock and enjoy it every weekday. Last week, talked about all the local tracks in the New York area building up to this right here. And coming up on Tuesday, a new show, Glory Road. You see right there, Hall of Fame crew chief Ray Everham. He will be talking and exploring the history of NASCAR and so many big names involved Rick Hendrick, Jeff Gordon. Tony Stewart, Bobby Allison, all guys that this has been their life. So if you asked if anybody would come to pit road, I don't think Chase Elliott will, but I do expect cars to come to pit road, not because they can make it off fuel, but take the time to put tires on now and then maybe 10 or 12 laps take fuel only. Blaney. So a little bit of trickery. We see Blaney, Blaney Johnson, they're going to lead a majority of the second half Blaney's of the field. Stop. So as always, pit strategy continues to change, Kelly. All right, so the Jimmy Johnson rearview mirror saga continues, and now that they have opted to pit under the stage break, they're going to try handing him some zip ties to see if Jimmy can reattach that rearview mirror himself. As far as this car, the 48's just really loose in the right-handers. It's going to be four tires of fuel and an air pressure adjustment for the 48. So look right here, you see the mechanic reach in. And some more more parts and pieces to Jimmy Johnson. And then give him a tear off. He doesn't want to tear off. He might rather have a rear view mirror. Yep, this is impressive that Jimmy's going to try to fix this as he rolls around here. But sometimes you have to do whatever's possible to improve your situation. So we see these cars pit right here with 48 to go. It's been well documented. Rick, you can only run about 35 or 36 laps on fuel. So they can't make it on fuel yet. But they have fresh tires, just leaving their options open. So it was Martin Truex Jr. that jumped up and won stage one. Then Chase Elliott flexed his muscles and won stage two. The big Simple and true. Can world-renowned artist Red Hongu use the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank? Yes, but this isn't just for anyone. Chase, make more of what's yours. Want to dominate your fantasy football draft? Go to rotoworld.com to get your fantasy football draft guide, customizable cheat sheets, position rankings, extensive player outlooks, and more. rotoworld.com. Dominate your draft. And here it comes. Austin Dillon wins. There's the ace. Bubba Wallace in second. And they contact. Watch into the bottom of the draft. Guide. You don't like that kind of racing? Don't even watch. The champ is back in victory lane. How special. Is this Harry Ambrose? Speaking. I read about your case with that woman. Uh, this isn't the best time. I'm sorry. I could really use a set of eyes on this. The reason is the suspect. It's a kid? They were his parents. He was the only one seen going in and out of the room. He poisoned them. 
How's it being back? It's been a while. There's no reason Julian would do something like this. He's told us already. He's confessed it. He's so far beyond anything you can understand. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Your own kid killing him. You went out behind the motel and picked some leaves. And you knew what would happen when they drank it. Yes. It's happening now or after this. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Sonic. This is how you Sonic. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. And by Go Bowling. Want to have some fun with family and friends? Well, go Bowling. And want to check in with Rutledge Wood. He's at the Peacock Pit Box. That's right, Rick. You know, speaking of bowling, the nice folks at Go Bowling made all the NBC team these sweet bowling balls. I got Dale Jr.'s right here. But you know what? I'm wondering, Dale, since you're over there by the carousel in the bus stop, who is going through there trying to wreck it and make 7-10 splits each time? Who have you been watching? <laughs> I'm sure all these guys are going through there a bit different every time. So it's hard to, it's hard to be consistent through the bus stop. But Chase Elliott, I mean, he is driving at 10 tenths through there. I'll tell you that. He doesn't look the smoothest, but he's certainly getting through there pretty quickly. We've seen it all all afternoon how he's made ground there. Hey, Dale, let's chat with his crew chief, Alan hey, Gustafson. Chat with his crew chief and, uh, Alan Gustafson. So what's impressed you more how aggressive, so what's your, impressed young more how aggressive your young driver's been or the lead. cheer from the crowd when he yeah, took I mean, the lead? Uh, he's done a good job. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's done a good job. He's a really good road racer. And, uh, you know, Kyle's tough, so anytime you can pass Kyle, it's, uh, it's a good thing. But the guy's done a good job on his Sun Energy One Chevy. And... Um, Hopefully we Ray, can keep it up front. Ray, do you get with this? How far how far you run him? When would you pit yeah, next? Well, I mean, that's the question. Yeah, well, I mean that's the million dollar question, right? So we're all gonna find out together. But uh, yeah, you know, we're committed we now. We're as brave as we can be, so <laughs> we'll, we'll, we're all in and uh, nice hopefully we can work it out. It would be a nice birthday present for this guy who turns forty three today for his driver to win, Kelly. Yeah, well, Mike Wheeler, crew chief on the 11 car, would like to spoil that party, I'm sure. What more does Denny need to get up there and compete with the 18 and 9? Uh, we got to help our right hand just a little bit. We're a little bit tight to the right, some free to the left, so uh, definitely getting a wedge adjustment here during the uh, next pit stop. Probably our last pit stop, but uh, he's doing a pretty good job hanging in there. Uh, you know, those two, two guys in front of us are just a little bit better. Um, I think we're the next best car with the 78, but uh, I think we get a little bit of adjustment, we got a chance. Thanks, Wheels. Rick? A little bit of an adjustment, they said. There was a penalty that the 48 had to serve. Yeah, it's been documented that Jimmy Johnson is struggling without a rear view mirror. Well, to make matters worse, you're going to see right here. Remember the drivers on the left side, pit boxes on the right. That's very different. Well, you're allowed to tip just three pit boxes. Well, look right there. I think he clips the corner of that box. That makes an extra pit box. That penalty is driving through too many pit boxes. That'll be the tail end of the longest lines. Take a listen to what the 48 had to say. No, we did. I saw it. We did. I watched it specifically. It's damn close for certain, but he did not. So Chad doesn't think so. He disagrees. NASCAR is going to use the pro system and all means necessary to assess a penalty. So they, they're going to disagree, obviously. And I would say uh, since he's in the back, they're not going to take the penalty away. Chase Elliott has been in this position before. He has been in position to win a race. He has Kyle Busch on his outside. Chase Elliott has struggled with restarts. He needs to have a great one right now. Diving into turn number one. Chase Elliott with a great restart that time. Kyle Busch all behind him. Chase Elliott gets loose. Kyle Busch trying to take the lead away as he goes to two. Elliott slips coming out of one. The inside line opens up, and here comes Kyle Busch. Back to the lead and back to the top of the leader, Gordon Watkins Glenn. Chase will stay with him in second. Now Hamlin in the 11th, third position as they stack up behind Hamlin. Headed to the interlude. Center that interlude every time, and I think that his lines are there just a little bit different. And 
Chase Elliott's able to gain about a car length or two as they go through the carousel. Chase Elliott had a great launch on the restart. He just didn't execute in turn one. And you have to wonder how that's affecting him mentally. He's been so hard on himself about making mistakes late in the race, having an opportunity to win the race. He's going to have to forget it. Just let it go away and go attack Kyle Busch. Well, you mentioned it, a slip off turn one has definitely hurt the nine. He accelerates good. You called it, Rick, a great restart by the nine. But look what happens. He drives deep into turn one. It pushes through the middle, and then he can't get powered down. He's up on the curb. And that allows the 18 to Kyle Busch to get to the driver's right and clear him going into turn two. Here they come out of turn number one. Bush away with a lead. Elliott's in second. Battle behind them is for the number three position. You got Hamlin in the 11 there. That's that two-car battle behind Chase Elliott. Elliott's smooth, though, through turn number three, across turn number four, as Kyle Busch in that green car will bring the field to the back straightaway. Kyle Busch with a healthy lead. Off that track position, Chase Elliott holds it back. Man, look at those guys driving into interludes with a great camera shot. Chase gains a little bit of ground again in the interlude. Here's the battle for third. He makes Jones giving pressure to Denny Hamlin as they go to this interlude. Jones waiting on the throttle for Hamlin to make a mistake. Can't get a run off, off the uh, carousel into six. When did Eric Jones become a road racer? Here he is, racing against Denny Hamlin. Martin Truex Jr. behind him, going for his third road course win in a row. So Eric Jones stepping up the road course racing game here in Watkins Land. The battle continues between Hamlin Jones and Martin Truex Jr. They're fighting for that third spot. Hamlin has it. Jones looking for it. And we see the 31 of Ryan Newman around. It's right in front of me. He's... He's able to get moving. I thought he was going to get stuck in the sand, but Ryan Newman able to get moving. No caution. No caution coming out. He stays going, but obviously losing a lot of track position. You're going to see this is heading down into turn six. He just looks high. I can't tell if there was contact with the 34 if he just missed lane trying to defend. In the end, though, the 31 spun around, as Jeff mentioned, did a nice job getting out of that sand, but the pressure continues from Chase Elliott onto the leader, Kyle Busch. Chase Elliott runs that interlude so good. If you look at the game, the game that he made through that interlude, look at the pressure. Like really on the bumper of the 18. Kyle being real smooth, though, doesn't put a wheel off, doesn't slip a wheel, none, as they come out of the carousel. Remember the last time that Chase Elliott took the lead from Kyle Busch, it took him four laps to get by him. So that's about where we are right now. And right here, turn six, this is where he did it. He entered low in turn seven, looking again to make the same move. Dives to the inside, trying to replicate what he did before to take the lead away. But Kyle Busch motors away from the nine of Chase Elliott coming out of turn seven as they dive back into turn number one. Now it's a two-car link lead that Kyle Busch has over Chase Elliott. Oh, that work that he did through the bus stop and the carousel washed away. See if he can regain that lost ground now, Rick. Chase Elliott falls now three, four car lengths behind Kyle Busch. This end of the racetrack belongs to Kyle Busch. Chase Elliott falls about five car lengths behind. Let's see if he can make it up through the bus stop, through the carousel, and on the other side of this racetrack. Bags, you said it right. That's, that's the end of the track that Kyle Busch is the strongest, but Chase makes all his ground back up through this interloop. Look how low he is to the center of the interloop. And into the carousel, he also gains ground on Kyle Busch. Trying to close that gap back up. And it's Jeff Burton into six. And he lost all that ground because of the move he made in turn seven. He didn't pull it off. Now he's just got to claw his way back. He can't do it in one corner. Use that interloop to his advantage. He's really good in the carousel as well. So right now, Chase Elliott's goal is just take another couple laps and get there and take another shot. And remember the last time this battle was taking place, Kyle Busch was hoping that the nine would use up his stuff. Can world-renowned artist Red Hong Yi use the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank, all while creating a masterpiece made of tea leaves? Yes, but this isn't for just anyone. It's for the strongest man in her life. Life lived Red's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. On Sunday nights this fall, it's all eyes on. 
Because this isn't just a game. This is Sunday Night Football on NBC. And here it comes, the closer, Kevin Harvick, puts on a clinic. Austin Dillon wins a very emotional victory. There's the ace. Bubba Wallace in second. Here's Kyle, going to take a bow. And the contact. Watson to the bottom of the side. Here comes the 18. He puts the all my back. You don't like that kind of racing? Don't even watch. Martin Truex Jr., the champ, is back in victory lane. How fitting. How special. for the Premier League, beginning Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN. Ninja Warrior tomorrow on NBC. Just 40 laps remain. Monster Energy Cup Series race from Watkins Glen. Okay, it's presented by Applebee's. And the Irish Hills of Michigan are calling. They want to have this excitement at Michigan. That's coming up next week. Michigan International Speedway. That race begins at 2.30 on NBC Sure. Get another sellout crowd here at Watkins Glen. This battle continues to build. The 18 of Kyle Busch has the advantage over Chase Elliott. We've seen this before, and Chase Elliott normally has been able to close that gap through the bus stop and the interlude, but has had a little bit more problem catching up to the 18. Let's listen into the radio tonight. Hey, but if you can't get him, just take care of the fuel for me. Take care of the fuel for me. So, Rick, basically, that's Al Dustin saying, listen, I appreciate the push, your, the pressure you are putting on Kyle Busch. But, Jeff, remember, they pitted at 17. they got to make it to their next window. They've had a yeah, couple yellows at the that stages, radio, but that's it. We haven't that. seen any extended okay, yellows. Sure. Hard to save gas around here running these type of laps. Well, if they're saving they gas, in that radio, what is Denny Hamlin doing? Because they have driven stuff, away you know. from third place. Look that at the gas good. that they it. have created. I mean, these two cars are so much faster than the rest of the field. It's amazing. So I'm not so sure, Steve, that you can be saving fuel and driving away from the rest of the field like this. No, it's difficult. Listen, it's, it's real simple, Rick. You know how you make fuel? You make horsepower, you burn fuel. So you, you, it's hard to go fast and save fuel. And the fuel window that we talked about around 35 laps. As we look back as these two coming into turn six. Yeah, it was right underneath me. I saw it happening, and Casey Kane was Andy on the brakes trying to get underneath Paul Menard, and he just got away from him. He gathered it back up. Nice save. I thought he was coming over here in the sand trap right underneath me. The fuel window you had mentioned from 35 to what? About 33 to 35. 33 to 35. So if they pit it on lap 17, 35 puts them at lap 52. Yeah, but we are on right now, lap 53. There were seven yellows in there, and around here you hear the cars get shut off under caution. You want to know what they're doing. They're saving fuel. So it's about two to one. So Simple Math says they could probably make it to lap 54, maybe 55. And then it's about execution, right? The strategy is great. But we already saw we saw Jimmy Johnson go through too many pit boxes in the Xfinity race. We saw a tremendous amount of penalties. You've talked about it, how backwards this pit road is. The driver's on the wrong side. Everything happens differently, Dave. Steve, remember what Kyle Busch told Marty in Countdown to Green today about pushing the race car. He wasn't sure that he could do it 100% all day. And last year, he drove from the back to the front a couple of times and believes he may have used up the equipment during the day. So, out front, Kyle doesn't have to work as hard and has been happy to stay in front of the nine. Chase Marty, Elliott in that nine, Davis dropped a little bit back from the 18. That's because he just came on the radio. Alan Gustafson a moment ago. I'm just going to say it here. We asked Alan a moment ago how great were you. 
you is so how brave are you? As soon as they make it to the end, they want to come on the end. They want to come on their road. That's two laps away, Kelly. That's two laps away, Kelly. That's very tight. That's very tight to make it to the end of the race. Junior. The 32 car, I believe, is blowing the motor. He stopped here in the interloop. He's going to bring out a yellow. And caution, yep, Mount caution comes out for Matt DiBenedetto. They couldn't, they and couldn't do Steve it. Steve was up here in the booth yelling, you guys have got to pit, you guys have got to pit, because they knew a caution was coming out. If they were on pit road, they would have been in perfect position. Would have been green light, but no one was fortunate enough to see that car having trouble and have the opportunity to get to pit road. The leaders had already committed, so nobody could take advantage of it. So you see right here. The four, he's looking and he sees the flight turn red. He has to bail back onto the racetrack. I can do a he was pit strategy thing here. Rodney Chittles, Kevin Harvick paying attention. It cost him some spots, but this was almost the move of the race. If he could have got on the pit roads, you see he's down there and he fails. You see the lights that go by right there, they're flashing red. That means pit road is closed. So that's a penalty he couldn't hey, have Steve, pitted. Lap 53. Hey, this Steve, is exactly 53. When the this is exactly came out last when the year. caution Martin came out last year. year. Everybody Martin in the field, Jr. and everybody in the field, field. but Truex had, had to save a massive to amount of fuel to be able to make it to the end. This is going to be a stretch. This is going to be a stretch. Give you a headache as a crew chief to make it to the end from here certain things are bound to happen rick if you can run 35 you're going to be asked to run 37 and there's something about nascar racing road course racing and fuel strategy all of these cars right here the whole field will be forced now it's time to come to pit road we're going to see who can do the best job barring any other yellows you get yellows you can save gas you're fine but last year there were no yellows so you mentioned restarts between these two front guys this next one's going to be important, but first, it's on the pit crews. Yeah, it puts so much pressure on the pit crews because all of these teams will be coming down to pit road when pit road opens and having service done to their cars. Yeah, pit road's not open yet. The other interesting thing, Rick, is remember some guys, they only have nine or ten laps on their tires. Will someone try to get a big advantage by getting gas only? Look at Kevin Harvick. Look, he knows it. Oh, shots. So close. That was going to be his chance. Can world-renowned artist Red Hongyu use the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank? Yes, but this isn't just for anyone. Chase, make more of what's yours. Is this Harry Ambrose? Speaking. I read about your case with that woman. Uh, this isn't the best time. I'm sorry. I could really use a set of eyes on this. The reason it's the suspect. It's a kid? They were his parents. He was the only one seen going in and out of the room. He poisoned them. How's it being back? It's been a while. There's no reason Julian would do something like this. He's told us already. He's confessed it. He's so far beyond anything you can understand. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Your own kid killing him. You went out behind the motel and picked some leaves. And you knew what would happen when they drank it. Yes. And so now the teams will be going over the wall and servicing these cars for what would be the last time. And they will be able to make it on fuel about right there. There's 36 to go. When they come back, they'll have a, at least another lap of caution. So it'll be about 34 laps when they come back to green. And all of the crews have to be on their A game right now because this race could be won the race off of pit road crews and drivers rick i know we're going to talk about pit stops and tire changes there's some cars deeper in the field that only have a handful of laps they may take gas only the reason i say that it's just chaos we're going to have guys leaving the timing of cars coming into our pit box is going to be very different than it normally is under normal hey everybody takes four tires plus it's all backwards so man that's difficult as it as it is this is the only racetrack where they pit this direction so it's just easy to make mistakes we saw a lot yesterday in the xfinity race 
And business about to pick up on pit road. Race leader Kyle Busch leading the line on the pit road. Alan Gustafson Marty. told Chase Elliott, Alan Gustafson told, told Chase Elliott, we are right, 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 right to save all the fuel. I'm going to need you to save all the fuel. And then he told John Giannotto, make sure you pack it full. Make sure you pack it full. Look tighter to the essence for Chase, but no chassis changes, Dave. The leader likes the balance on his race car. Four Goodyear tires full of Sunoco fuel. If they can get a piece of tape on the front of the car as well, they have some wiggle room with the engine temperature. That will help the aerodynamics. We keep my wheel and up there just one adjustment away on this 11 car from being able to battle for the lead. Denny Hamlin has been loose on the left hand. There's tight in the right, so they're going to make a wedge adjustment. Give him four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. I can do that real quick. You want me to?
Race day? I'm making chili. Nah, hot dog. Uh-uh. Chili? Nah, 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 nah. Hot dog. How about a sub? With chili. <laughs> Race day calls for a Coke. Nothing better. It's tailgate 101. I'm a fan or myself up here on this perch. I'm excited to see him try to do that and see what these guys can salvage with this kind of an issue. If they can find a way to keep fuel in that car and give him, give him enough, he's going to work his way through this traffic best he can. It'll be harder as he gets closer toward the front of the field. Don't count him out just yet. And none of these races are easy to win. We see what just happened on pit road. But right now, my attention okay. shifts to Chase Elliott. We've seen how many close calls he's had of winning these races. The two cars that he had to beat and appear to are now in trouble. Denny Hammond with the penalty. Kyle Busch, Kurt, Kyle Busch obviously with the problem he had. So now it's about Chase Elliott executing. He has a fast enough car. No mistakes. Great restarts. Do everything right. You have a great chance to win your first race today. The game is changed, obviously, for the Chase Elliott. Alan Gustafson updating him on where the situation is around him. With everybody that's around him, a moment ago, this was the radio transmission. This was the radio transmission. Everybody's pretty much good to the end here. Yeah, Chase is going to try to get back in there. It's close. Just keep saving. Save all you can. Just got to keep that in mind. And when you get an opportunity to attack, you know, attack. But just don't be frivolous with it. Just save fuel when you can. Don't Copy. be frivolous with it. Don't and be save frivolous when you can. with it. It's going to be a stretch for these guys to make it to the end. It's going to be a stretch for these guys to make it to the end. But certainly for Chase Elliott, the opportunity for career win right number him. one, right in front of him. And you see Bill Elliott right there, Hall of Famer. Mentioned earlier. Where did he get his first win? Well, it was on a road course, and it was at Riverside out of California back in 1983. Bill Elliott, he had the same frustration that Chase has had. He finished second eight times prior to getting that first win in his career. Right now, Chase Elliott has eight second-place finishes already. That's the frustration, coming oh so close and yet not being able to finish. Well, Rick, we, it's been well documented the issues for the 11 and for the 18. Well, that really has cycled some new players to the front of the field. So we see Chase Elliott. Well, he's going to line up next to the three of Austin Dillon. They've worked strategically. Only that's allowed him to line up on the front row. Behind him, Kurt Busch is on two tires. We heard he had a flat, so he gains some, he gains some track position. Remember, he started at the tail of the field, right. so he knows how to get through traffic. And don't don't just count out that 78 yet. Remember, he <laughs> stayed out and won stage yep. one on purpose. Gave up a little track position. And I thought it was interesting. We heard from Mike Wheeler. He said, we think we're the second best car to the 78. I said, was that a Freudian slip? Did he really mean the 18? Or does he think the 78's yeah. the best car here? We're getting ready to find out. Well, also up there in the mix, the 19 of Daniel Suarez. He's running six. Chase Elliott, Austin Dillon making up row number one. Green flag back in the air. Chase Elliott. Trying to stay with him as they go to turn number one. Three wide behind him for second. Chase Elliott. There it's Kurt Busch. Then the ninth, or the 78 of Martin Truex Jr. moves up to third. Everybody rooting in, gouging for positions now as they enter the exit, or actually enter the S's. It is Chase Elliott. He's away with the lead of the nine. Kurt Busch, the new customer at the back door in the 41, as everybody makes it through cleanly through turn number four. Chase Elliott's got to feel pretty good. Having the confidence of the engine. Car is not up there to battle for the sleeve. No, the speed he has in his car. Don't count out Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch, a great road course racer. And then Mark Trix Jr., the guy who's won the last few road course races in the series, marching his way into third place. Yeah, this is crazy. These late race restarts always create this this group of cars running together. Martin Truex Jr. looking for second to come to try to take the charge to Chase Elliott. Good move underneath Kurt Busch and the turn seven. Now, the nine of Chase Elliott will see the 78 of Martin Truex Jr. in his rear. Martin Truex Jr. trying to make it three wins in a row at road course races. He won here a year ago, then won Sonoma earlier this year, and now has moved up to second, chasing after and Rick, one of the keys for the 78 and winning this race last year, they put it on, they got they out to the lead on, quickly, they got out to and, the then and then saved from there. So I'm wondering from the drivers, Jeff, for you, how difficult is that? Because you know you've got to make it to the end of the race number one. You've got to save fuel as you're going to grab this race. It's going to save fuel as you're going to grab this race. It's going to save hard to win the final 10 laps of this race to win it last year. I think right now, if you're Martin Truex Jr., you're thinking more cautions are coming. This is Rockets Land. This is a road course. I think you can save a little bit because you're going to get a chance to 
much to fill back up. If you go 10, 15 laps with no caution, then maybe go ahead and start pushing the issues, Steve. But right now, I think he's been saving fuel. I really think they had a couple yellows right there after they pitted, or a couple yellow flag laps that are going to help them save fuel. But I agree. Go hard now. Let's worry about fuel if we can get the lead. You don't want to allow the nine. If you save fuel now, that's what the nine's going to do. He's going to save as well, Rick. Right. He's going to back right up to you. So both of these guys are out there. They're kind of in that quandary, right? They want some yellows to save fuel, but I don't think they want the bunch of fuel up too many times to give somebody like Kyle Bush a chance to get back in the mix. Chase Elliott out to a very sizable lead over Mark Shrek. Jr. and we know that Alan Gustafson knows how to win these races. He actually was with Kyle Busch when Kyle Busch won his very first race in the Cup Series and Chase Elliott looking for his first as well. Chase Elliott has the fastest car ran a 71-81. Truex is 72-33. What do you do when you run a little slower than the leader? Drive it harder. Look at Mark Trex Jr. Drop them curves. That's the entrance to the interlude going to cut over this curve, put the whole car on the curve, watch them as they come to the exit. There's a ton of curve there, trying to straighten out that end loop. Come faster. And the field working their way through the carousel once again as you see the gap between the 9 of Chase Elliott and the 78 of Martin Shrex Jr. And back to third, Kurt Busch. Fourth is Eric Jones. Fifth, Daniel Suarez. Austin Dillon has fallen back to the sixth position after starting on the front row. And there's the 18 of Kyle Busch. Already, Kyle Busch has made his way up to 18. There was no way that I could see this 18 getting to the front. I guess I was thinking with yellows and strategy, Kyle Busch wasn't listening because he's thinking, I'm just going to pass everyone. I mean, I don't need any help. The way he thinks he can do it is he's going to drive it to the front. <laughs> Good for him. I'll just pass everyone. Guys, he's had such a fast race car today. He's been about a half a second clearly faster than even the third place car. The only car to be able to run with him today, obviously, is Elliot Sadler, or Elliot, uh, Chase Elliott. So I think he can drive all the way up to at least second place. Depends on where we get the cautions and how they fall to be able to give him a shot to get up there with Chase Elliott. And I think the big thing, the big advantage that the 18 of Bush has is that he didn't have to worry about fuel. Remember, they had that problem, and he came in two laps later under caution, filled it up. So there's no worry about saving fuel for him. He's just hammered down going as fast as he can. Yeah, Jeff Burton, you mentioned earlier how good that 18 is. Could be the best on a road course. He just easily passed the 48 of Jimmy Johnson as we go NASCAR nonstop. Father passing, Jim Hampton. It's the same thing I'm going to do with you. It's an emotional thing to watch a child grow up, especially get behind the wheel. I want to keep, you know, stacking up the memories and the miles and the years. He's going to get mine, and I'm going to get a new one. When it's time for your old Chevy truck to become their new Chevy truck, there's Truck Month. Get 10 or 14 percent below MSRP on 2018 Silverado pickups when you finance with GM Financial. Plus, during Truck Month, make no monthly payments for 90 days. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. It's Cheesy Bites Pizza Season of Pizza Hut. Your favorite pull, dip, pop icon is back. The one and only Cheesy Bites Pizza with 28 poppable, dippable, cheese-filled bites. But hurry, it won't last long because no one out-pizzas the hut. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. All the way up. I think there's a formula there. Kevin here says Mobile One Annual Protection is proven to protect for 20,000 miles. It'll save you a lot of time. Dad, with all this extra time. Sorry, buddy. Kevin and I have a tea time at 11. 20,000 miles guaranteed. Mobile One Annual Protection. When it's too cold for camping, we go camping. When it's too hot to work, we work. Too wet to keep going? Nah. This is the Gator SUV 835 with game-changing heat and air and three wide seating. It's never too anything for anything. Nothing runs like a deal. Get $400 off the Gator XUV 835M at any participating John Deere dealer. 
It's Cheesy Bites Pizza Season of Pizza Hut. Your favorite pull, dip, pop icon is back. The one and only Cheesy Bites Pizza with 28 poppable, dippable, cheese-filled bites. But hurry, it won't last long because no one out pizzas the hut. Chase Elliott has a 1.4 second lead over Martin Trex Jr. You've been watching the progress of the 18 of Kyle Busch as well. He's up to 13th now and keeps moving forward. Let's take a look at today's Ram trucks proven to last. Well, first, these leaders, they're going to have to manage the fuel. It seems like they're right on the edge of their window. They need to make sure they can make it to the end on the fuel they have and take care of their equipment. Even with the 26 to go, this seven-turn road course is very hard on the cars, especially the brakes. They need to make sure they have brakes. And if the yellows come out, Rick, restarts, restarts, restarts. All right, we want to go through the field. Let's start with the nine. Rick, in three straight races, Jason Elliott has three straight wins. But he's trying to do something today that he's never done. But he's trying to do something today that he's never done in his first career overall win. When he took the lead, when he took the lead, the fans won the stage. The fans went bananas. Big cheers if he's able to win this thing. Big cheers if he's able to win this thing. They know Chase. He's behind the mark. He's trying for his third straight race. 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 He's trying for Maybe they can track down the nine. Maybe they can track down the nine and get that third straight win. How about Eric Jones win. back there? How about Eric in the Jones third position? There. Yes, in the third position. Yes, he's a man from Byron, Michigan. And he, and he, really really he has really worked hard on the first program. He's gone to schools. He's gotten personal training. 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 He's gotten that turn right as well as left. So this is nothing new to him, and he thought this would be a place perhaps he could get that playoff making win. He's up to four now. In fifth is Kurt Busch. Yes, the same guy who started 34 today. A moment ago, they had a flat right rear tire. But the caution came out. They came down pit road. They came down pit road. So the right side tires only that put him in this position right now. And with this talent, he's hanging on to it. He's hanging on to it. Wish yesterday, Kelly. Wish yesterday, Kelly. So this would be a nice birthday present. He's top five. J.D. McMurray in that one car trying to close in on the birthday boy. It's been a disappointing and frustrating season for this one team, to say the least. Chief Matt McCall, though, said this race here was an outlier. They knew they could take some risk with strategy. They did so. It helped them gain some track position overall. They feel like they're making gains but have much more to do this season to really compete for a win, Dave. After a top five qualifying effort, Kyle Larson thought he'd be better in the race, but the car just hasn't been there for him. One thing that's helped him is a track bar adjuster in Inside the car, he can work the chassis to make it better William as he Byron runs, Kelly. William Byron coming off of his career best finish and his crew chief telling me they definitely have some momentum with that. He said it's nice to know that you can be aggressive with pick holes and strategy if you have the speed to back it up. William proving to be a great little road racer, spent a lot of time go karting. He also works with road course specialist Max Pappas, who has been on the radio, telling William elbows out, elbows out. Behind him, you'll see that too with Brad Keselowski. He made up a lot of track position that last time down the pit road as they took no tires to get there. His crew chief, Paul Wilson, a little bit frustrating of a weekend. They just haven't been their normal selves. This is a team that's new, usually qualifying up front, contending for the wins. They're not really sure what's changed, but nothing that they tried to practice really seemed to pay off. Kelly, the pass around Keselowski by the 18 of Kyle Busch was for ninth. He resumed the race in 24th. He is pushing that Toyota Camry for all it's worth. But one wonders, after making the mention early on that he pushed it too hard last year, and there he pushes it beyond turn one, will the equipment be there if he gets back to the front, Rick? 
Hey, when they are well, behind the truck, definitely putting the on a show. And and that's here what before. we have always you know, appreciated about what Kyle Busch can do. Kyle is he shows us field. how talented he is week in and week out, whether it's winning a race or it's doing what he's doing right now, starting 24th and going by people like a Brad Keselowski, like a Kevin Harvick, champions of the sport, like they're standing still. Yeah, I mean, you saw that slide through the interloop right there of Brad Kozlowski. Kyle Busch took advantage of that. Almost gave it back a turn. Well, oh, the Matt six Kenseth. of Matt Kenseth off track. He gets it refired, going back in the right direction. Oh, I know where that is. That's up with you, Dale Jr. in the interloop. And yeah, let's take a look at what happened here. I think entering the interloop, he's going to have some issues in city mode. Oh, yeah. Right. He's getting passed. By Denny Hamlin, who's been coming through the back of the field, just turns it around in the center of the interloop. The probably doesn't make any contact here. Long slide there. Nobody going to hit nothing. Denny's been working his way just like Kyle Bush to the back from the back of the field, and got to be aggressive to make those make the passes and take those positions when you can. Denny Hamlin has made his way up to 19th. They were close to what Kyle Bush has done. He's ninth. We go NASCAR nonstop. Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, hey Martin. It's going not great. I need to get you guys back to 100%. My work here is done. Five hour energy. Get back to 100%. Hey, Stevie, just ah, for you, another truck uh, loads Toyota. What? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, the national clearance event, you've got the last of the 2018. And super low APR finances. Maybe that's why they go so fast. Yes, here. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. That's got to be a record. Right now, at Toyota's National Clearance Event, you can get incredible deals on the last of the 2018s. Okay. Offers end September 4th. To learn more about all our great deals, visit Toyota.com. Save on the last of the Wait, 2018s. Wait, so now it's tacos? Come in today. It was roast Toyota. beef a minute Let's ago, go now it's places. tacos? Best tailgate. Oh, okay. No, real football. Y pollo asado. Poops and wings. Dude, subs. Hot dog. Yeah. Chili dog. No, Dodger dog. It's gotta be crawfish. Now you talk burgers. Seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Um, what? You need a hot grill and an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke. Come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day. Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. Grab yourself a Coke. It's tailgate 101. Since 1968, Michigan International Speedway has been creating lasting memories with friends, families, and your favorite drivers. This summer, the tradition continues as we celebrate 50 years of good times, week-long entertainment, and racing excitement. Be at the Consumers Energy 400 on August 12th. Tickets starting at $35. Kids 12 and under half off on Sunday. Free Friday and Saturday. Free Saturday post-race concert with the Cadillac 3. Visit mispeedway.com or call 888-905-7223 today. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. On Sunday nights this fall, it's all eyes on. Because this isn't just a game. This is Sunday Night Football on NBC. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Credit One Bank. The credit card perfect for everyday purchases. Toyota. Let's go places. No, Coca-Cola, I I mean, the I official fan the refreshment of NASCAR. Days. And by Applebee's, all you can eat riblets and chicken tips. Really the 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 NASCAR America is on weekdays at 5 o'clock. What a great show and shows this week as we built up to this race here at Watkins Glen on Wednesday with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Wednesdales. His guest will be Eric Alvarola, 
And he always gets the best out of his guests when they come visit at the Big Oak Table. And last week, it was Martin Shrex Jr. and Jr. You guys learned quite a bit about Martin Shrex Jr. at the Big Oak Table. Yeah, we sure did. The week before, we learned that Kyle Bush takes, took photography in high school. That's crazy. And Drew X, he designs and builds his own gas-powered boat, RC boats, and he holds 14 world records. That's what he does with his time off. Pretty incredible. How about you? No control boats? No, and no world records either. <laughs> I mean, just now, you know, now he's a champion and 14 world records. I'm just going to sit up here in shame, apparently. I like can't live up to those sort of levels. Well, he's looking good. He's still 1.2 seconds behind Chase Elliott. And then behind him is Eric Jones, who's 9.2 seconds behind Chase Elliott. But listening to the radio. with the 20 thinking right there planning ahead at some point you have to ask yourself chris gale says look it doesn't look like we can run down the 9 of the 78 suarez isn't coming from behind so let's go ahead and take advantage of this save some fuel if we do have an overtime situation i mean that makes us the best been. off fuel i will say though Eric and Jones, race has been nobody crazy is coming, but show has been his team, 18 and Cowboys, he's all the way back at night, but he's coming, slowly but sure. And yeah, behind him, you mentioned yeah, sure. his teammate, I'm game. Game. Kyle Bush coming, he's moved all the way up to ninth place. Well, all these leaders, they've kind of stretched it out, but it's not quite as easy from here on back. Jamie McMurray, Kyle Larson. Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch, and then behind them, William Byer doing a really good job today. So these guys right here, they're battling for position. And right now, if you're looking, I mean, Bush, he's only a few cars away from being up in the top five, so he's not out of this race. If you get a late race restart, this guy right here is going to be dangerous. Well, you can tell that he's aggressive. Kyle Busch now will set his sights on his brother, Kurt Busch. He's about a half a second behind him, but he's in eighth position now. So Kyle Busch has made it up to eighth. Kurt Busch is running seventh. There he is. And there's the gap between the two. But as you mentioned, a couple interesting names that are up here in the top ten. Daniel Suarez having a, a very good run. He is yet to win in the Monster Energy Cup Series. He's running in the fourth position. And William Byron running ninth now. He has consistently run well. And is showing that he has a little promise behind the wheel of that 24 car. I think a lot of people were wondering if maybe he moved up a little bit too quick. After winning the championship in the Xfinity Series a year ago, he moved right into the Cup Series. And that was something that he's such a young race car driver, just 20 years old. William Byron has struggled, I think, to get the feel of these cars and get the way the competition is in this series. Yeah. Yeah, Rick, I think the thing with William Byron is, yeah, he may have moved up too quick, but that doesn't matter as long as everyone has patience. So if all the people at Hendrick Motorsports and all the sponsors and everybody involved, they understand he came maybe a year, maybe two, even two earlier. But give him time, and he has the ability to be successful. So, you know, when you're going to give a 20-year-old a chance in a cup car, you also have to be willing to give him a chance to prove he can do it over a long period of time. You can't expect him to come in and just start winning races right off the bat. So patience is the key for success with this team and this driver. Jeff, a lot of people rooting for a new winner like Byron or perhaps Chase Elliott up front. But there's a lot of drivers who also would appreciate one of the same winners, one of the guys that's won already this year. And Bowman fits that category because he's the last driver still in on points. If there's not a new winner, he doesn't get pushed out. He helped himself last week with a career best finish at Pocono. And on the last stop, Sabrina they decided to take on tires the, as well uh, as fuel uh, to not jump track position because Greg Ives told the driver, I want a nice, safe top 15 to keep us where we are. You can see the points on the left. Bowman in the 88, still good, but barely, unless there's a new winner and he gets pushed down. You see a plus 63 over the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Eric Comro, I think, is worth discussing, even though it looks good at 140 down 14. He's had a little bit of a struggle today. Oh, it was an early accident. I mean, the variety of schedule when you leave here at the Glen, it's crazy, Rick. Where we go to completely different racetracks every week, so nothing is guaranteed. Jeez. And then with 15 to go here at the Glen, there's yeah. no guarantees here. As Mark Trex Jr. He is not letting Chase Elliott get out of his sight. And Mark Trex Jr., he's actually been the fastest car.
car the last several laps, and he's starting to run Chase Elliott down. Now, we don't know how much fuel they've saved or if they're still saving. i got to believe with 15 to go, you've got to go at this point. But Martin Truex Jr. doing a nice job of staying calm and starting to get close enough to apply some pressure. You can see Martin Truex Jr. loose off of turn six. That tells me he's not saving fuel. He's full throttle. Starting to get aggressive now. The intensity ramping up. 14 laps to go at the Glen, and... Martin Trex Jr. doesn't want anyone else to jump into the party. The big three, Martin Trex Jr., Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, they've been dominating the season. He doesn't want to give up that position. He doesn't want anyone else to win. That's why he is dogging Chase Elliott right now. They climb their way through the S's. Chase Elliott looks in the rear view mirror. Martin Truex Jr. getting closer and closer and closer. He's chopping it down. He's almost a half second behind as he heads to the inner loop. And the inner loop here. Chase Elliott, this is where he's been strong all day long. Both cars, look at, look at Truex, man. He's wheeling that thing hard, trying to make up some ground wherever he can. So yeah, can and he does. And Even nine. driving it that way, he's still closing on the nine car. Incredible. They're taking the fight to the nine car where he's been so strong. And I have to wonder who's more nervous, Awesome Bill, his dad, or Chase Elliott right now. You've got to not look in that mirror, though. Focus out front. Whatever helps you focus. Some drivers like to have lap times given to them. Some guys like to have the distance behind him and the second place car. Just focus on your car. Do not worry about Martin Truex Jr. right now. Cole Byrne must have given Martin Truex Jr. the green light to go get it because that's exactly what Martin Truex Jr. is trying to do right now. Reel in the nine of Chase Elliott taking advantage of breaking points. Now, it's just three car lengths that separate Chase Elliott and Martin Truex Jr. Chase Elliott's running for his life right now. Again, Martin Truex Jr., he is on the prowl. He is closing in on Chase Elliott. You needed a stopwatch a few minutes ago. It's down to now car lengths. Put him to six between the top two as they head for the interlude. After Burton Martin gets Truex done, Jr. Just, just attempts to that last lap. Look at the breaking zone there as he closes in on Chase. Coming through the interlude. Okay. Both cars get through cleanly. Yep. Looks like Chase is a little bit quicker there in the interlude. But Martin rolls in through the carousel and gains a little bit of ground back. Looks like to me, Junior, that Martin is stronger in the carousel. He's able to stay on the bottom longer, and that helps him carry some speed to this back straightaway. You can see he's gained yep. on him yeah, into turn good. six and outbreaking him a little bit. Now can he gain on him on that? So you see Chase Elliott a little bit loose on the exit of six. Martin Truex Jr. gaining on seven. The gap just two car lengths. Martin Trex Jr. spins the tires a bit. Great battle for the lead. You're not going to miss a thing as we go NASCAR nonstop. Welcome. Hi there. So what do you look for in a vehicle? Sleek designs. Performance. Dependability is top on my list. One thing to keep well, in mind, here's some vehicles that deliver on that. Long, long run, wow. the weakness for nine is the long oh, run. That's our so, truck. It's our truck. And, and there are also cars. Also Chevy's really the, the only brand, brand that they they may have J.D. Power dependability awards across car, cars, right? trucks, and hopefully, SUVs. Hopefully you saved enough, you know? Awesome and proud. You know, it's like a dynasty. It's impressive. It's Cheesy Bites pizza season of Pizza Hut. Your favorite pull, dip. Pop Icon is back. The one and only Cheesy Bites Pizza with 28 poppable, dippable, cheese-filled bites. But hurry, it won't last long because no one out pizzas the hut. Some things should never change, like the crisp, cold refreshment of Bush. Oh, this is going to be interesting should, to see who like gets here. Mike's aim. Mike, toss me a Bush. Yep. Wow. Good effort. <laughs> Kevin here says Mobile One Annual Protection is proven to protect for 20,000 miles. It'll save you a lot of time. Dad, with all this extra time... Sorry, buddy. Kevin and I have a tea time at 11. 20,000 miles guaranteed. Mobile One Annual Protection. When it's too cold for camping, we go camping. When it's too hot to work, we work. Too wet to keep going? Nah. This is the Gator XUV835 with game-changing heat and air and three wide seating. It's never too anything for anything. Nothing runs like a deer. Get $400 off the Gator XUV835M at any participating John Deere dealer. It's Cheesy Bites Pizza Season of Pizza Hut. Your favorite pull, dip. Pop Icon is back. The one and only Cheesy Bites Pizza with 28 poppable, dippable, cheese-filled bites. But hurry, it won't last long because no one out-pizzas the hut. 
you didn't miss a thing. Ross Jastain, slow on the racetrack. He actually backed it behind a wall. We stay green. Then the 48 of Jimmy Johnson backs it into the wall in turn seven, but he's able to get onto pit road. We stay green. The battle for the lead continues between Chase Elliott and Martin Truex Jr. You mentioned the 48 and the damage. That's going to make the playoff picture tight. What happened? The 47 of Edge Almendinger, kind of a dive ball move. That's a tough spot. Sometimes the spotters can't see it, can't tell you're there. Really the same thing we saw happen to Eric Amarola earlier in the day. 47 gets in here pretty deep. He's on the curve, nowhere to go. Makes contact with the 48, sending him into the wall. I guarantee there'll be a differencing of opinion on whether that was a good move or not. As we see the 78 of Truex continue to pressure the 9 of Chase Elliott. Here they come out of the inner loop. It's been about the same distance right here. There's times on the racetrack where Truex can close on the nine, but Elliott will gain that ground back yeah, somewhere else on. on the track. It's been pretty even so far the last few laps. Yeah, that, that right there, Truex was not able to hold the bottom in that carousel where we've seen him so strong. He still seems to be able to outbreak Chase Elliott, though, right which right tells right me right. if he can ever get to him, he's got an advantage on breaking. That's so important on a road course where you can overbreak somebody and drive okay, into a good door corner. Now. That's the same thing I'm seeing, Jeff. The 78 does have an advantage on corner entry. As I go back to that 48, Rick, I forget. He doesn't have a rear view mirror. He may have no idea Almendinger was back there. Well, the 9 of Chase Elliott, he has a rear view mirror, and it's full of the 78 of Martin Trex Jr. Chase Elliott coming out of turn number one, looking for career win number one. Can he hold off? A Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series champion, Martin Truex Jr., fading in the last couple of laps. That gives Chase Elliott some breathing room, Dale Jr. It's up to six as they leave turn four. Chase Elliott is making that lead a little bigger as they go through these final laps. But as he sees that 78 in the mirror, it's going to get harder and harder to be clean. Will he make these mistakes to give up some ground on the 78? If the 78 gets within two car lengths, he's going to feel that pressure. And the 78 right there, Truex, he completely has changed his line in the carousel. He's using way up the racetrack to try to turn and get a good run down the back straightaway. And it does seem to help him down the back straightaway. It hurts him in the carousel, but it seems to be helping his momentum. But we've seen Chase Elliott the last two laps. He's had the fastest race car on the racetrack. Junior, you used the right word, mistakes. It has to be a mistake-free lap every single time for Chase Elliott. He hears eight to go. Eight more times around the track. They have to be perfect. Mark Trex Jr. ready to pounce. He's closed the gap again. Now, just a car link and a half behind Chase Elliott. Pressure is building in Watkins Glen. Chase Elliott has to be flawless over the course of the next eight laps. Truex regroups, starting to shut it down now. Put the separation to four car lengths. Chase Elliott looks in the rearview mirror and sees Truex starting to creep in just a tad. After every corner, he looks in that rearview mirror to see whether he's gained any ground or put any distance between him and the 78. That 78 looks a little bigger in the mirror. He feels that pressure, that anxiety starts to build as the laps start to click off. Can Chase be mistake-free these last few laps and not give Mark Trex Jr. an opportunity to pass? 44 career Cup Series wins for his dad, but this one I think will be more than any one of those 44 watching his son try to get his first win at Watkins Glen, but he is going to have to earn it. Martin Truex Jr. is very good under braking. He is going to put the pressure on. It's coming, Steve. Chase Elliott has been so hard on himself, coming so close to getting the first win. Now just seven laps away from that first win. Martin Truex Jr. continuing to try to find a way around the nine. That time he Looked a little to the inside, taking a little bit more of a risk, getting into turn number one, closing the gap. But again, Chase Elliott pulls away. Mark Truex Jr., the closest he's been to Chase Elliott since we went back under the green flag. Here comes Truex across turn number four. Elliott now, two car lengths apart, and they're closing in on lap traffic headed to the inner loop. Chase Elliott is driving the race of his life. Never won on the Cup circuit. It's his dream. Look at this. Oh, lap traffic. These guys are trying to get out of the way. That's, I, can't, I don't think they could have done a better job to get out of the way right there. Chase driving the race of his life right now. You know that his heart is in his throat. It's incredible pressure for him to try to maintain trouble, this lead. Trouble, trouble, over here in front of me. Austin Dillon's run off course. Right in turn six, where they're coming right now, Austin Dillon working along the wall. The gap, still a car link between the top two.
no caution has come out. Chase Elliott. Almost like at a super speedway. Looking in his mirror. How close will that 78 get? Martin Truex Jr. continuing to try to put the pressure on. The more pressure he can put on Chase Elliott, the more possibility Chase Elliott will make a mistake. Gets through turn number one clean. Chase Elliott still two car lengths in front of the 78. The crowd in the S's grandstands are about to lose their mind. They're almost trying to will him to victory lane. That him is Chase Elliott. He is driving the race of his life, the hardest he has all day long. Trying to keep Hart Truex Jr. in the rearview mirror and is successful in doing so, at least for now. Absolutely. He's been pretty much mistake free these last few laps. I think if he can continue that, Martin will not have an opportunity. He will not be able to close the gap. You can see it right there. Martin just can't get any closer than this right here, and that's just not enough to really give Chase any kind of issue arrow-wise to be able to put enough pressure on his car to upset the night. Yeah, he's got what he's got to do. Martin Truex Jr., we saw him do it a couple laps ago. He just showed Elliot, he just showed Elliot that, hey, I want this spot. He kind of turned right down the front straightaway. Wasn't close enough to make the pass. But what I've seen lately is the mistakes actually have been coming from Truex. He's, he's trying to find some speed in his car. The car just doesn't have the grip right now. And, Jeff, that's what it's going to come down to. Mistakes. Alan Gutterson calmly. Five to go. In his 99th start, can Chase Elliott be mistake-free? Five more laps around Walker's Lane. One Martin. of the strengths of the 78 all day long has been a longer run. One of the weaknesses for Chase Elliott in the nine cars. One of the weaknesses for Chase Elliott in the nine cars. So the longest run. So we're going to see how this matches out. But you talk, talk about the calm voice of Alan Gustafson. Also a spotter and a hunt. A lot of calmness in the nine cars. Chase Elliott's answered the call. Chase Elliott's answered the call. Can he finish these final five laps? Chase hard into the inner loop. Into the braking zone. Look at Truex trying to close. Both those guys are getting into that breaking zone, but look at his Chase Elliott pulls out of that inner loop. Puts a great distance on him. Truex, who was gaining earlier in the carousel, doesn't seem to have that same strength as they go out of the carousel. Yeah, Chase is using the mistakes of the past to help him right now. Think about the races that he's not been able to close out. He learned from those mistakes. Can he finish it off? It's only five to go. Interesting thing, though, as these two guys are trying to step up their speed, they've actually slowed down. They were third and fourth fastest, not first and second that last lap. Well, this is the Chase Elliott the fans have been rooting for. This is the guy they expect to see on the racetrack trying to close out his first win. Everyone is saying the nine is going to be close on fuel. I think there's enough fuel report. left in that nine, left in that 78. Allen has not said a word about it. I asked lines. Allen, are they saving? He said absolutely not. That's the question right now. Does he have enough Tiger in the tank to make it all the way to the checkered flag? I don't think he's worried about fuel right now. He's got bigger fish to fry. And that biggest one of them all is Martin Truex Jr. Perfect laps for Chase Elliott as we head down to the checkers here at Watkins Glen International. Still the same distance. Truex unable to gain as they go into the breaking zone. Look at that nine car turn into the uh, inner loop. Incredible how they're using the curves and how those cars are working so well in that part of the racetrack. Chase gets a wide arc into the carousel, gets him a good drive off. Let's see what kind of runoff he gets here. Looks great to me. Yeah, great run by Chase. He's doing a really good job. He's got to work with some lap traffic that's coming up. He's going to have to time it right. He did not catch that lap traffic in front of him in the wrong place. That could be a huge roll coming down here in turn one. Is finding a way to get to that lap traffic in the proper place. Coming up on three laps to go. Chase Elliott. Having enough fuel completely out of their mind now. These two are racing for the win. They are giving everything they have. Diving into turn number one. The gap now one car length. The 78 of Martin Trex Jr. has closed the gap. Fighting for that lead. The talk all season long has been about the big three. Kevin Harvick, Just Kyle Busch, and Martin Truex Jr. Chase Elliott trying to steal the thunder this afternoon in Watkins Glen. The battle for the lead. Now separated by two car lengths on the back stretch. Here they come back into the interloop. The son of a legend trying to make a name for himself. Jumping over them curves. So Both cars entering hard. Using all the we curves, Chase win. again stretches just a little bit, maybe a car lane through the inner loop, through the exit of the inner loop. Through the carousel, Martin closes in the middle, but Chase gains ground on exit. A yes. great recovery by Chase Elliott. He missed turn one at the beginning of the S's that lap. That allowed Martin Truex Jr. to close. If he does.
because Martin Truex Jr. now is close enough to pounce on it. So the mistake that you just made and in the corner that you're getting ready to come to, do not make it again. If you do, Martin Truex Jr. will take the lead from you. Two laps to go, and Chase Elliott trying to join four others or be a part of four that have got their first win at Watkins Glen. Steve Park, Marcus Ambrose, A.J. Allmendinger, they've done it. Can Chase Elliott finish it? 250 career wins for Hendrick Motorsport if he's able to win. Hold your breath time at Watkins Glen. Chase Elliott, Martin Truex Jr. Now they are closer together. Put the separation at two car lengths. Elliott, Truex, they've left the field. This race comes down to these two drivers right now, headed up the back straightaway. Truex is definitely putting the pressure on in turns one and up through the S's, but this is Chase Elliott's end of the racetrack. Look at Truex makes a mistake right there and misses the exit of the inner loop. That is it. Right there, if Chase Elliott could just put together a lap and a half, he is going to win this race. Coming through the carousel to the corner exit, Chase is going to look in the mirror and see the distance to the 78. What a great feeling. That's why we love racing, Junior. Two guys going at it, forcing Truex Jr. into a mistake. You're right. Now the spotter's got to be telling him, hey, you got five car links, but he cannot take it too easy. You cannot relax. You still have to attack. But you have some room to back down just a little bit so you don't make a mistake. And coming out onto the Our front stretch, right the white flag in the air. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. Seven turns. He just needs to do seven turns perfectly at Watkins Glen to grab his first career win. He goes wide to turn one, the 78 coming up, closing the gap. Good, jumping up and down, yelling, screaming, losing their minds here at Watkins Glen. Can Elliott hang on? He's back to two car lengths in front of Truex as they leave the S's for the final time. Almost giving up the lead in turn one, but he's now got another comfortable lead as he breaks into the inner loop. Martin Truex charges hard, trying to gain that ground back. No mistakes by either driver here, but Chase Elliott, a cleaner corner. That's about four car lengths there through the carousel. Chase Elliott almost home free. Truex wide in the corner. He looks to be in great shape, but the mistake that he made in one again cannot be replicated here in turn six. Truex is out of fuel. Truex is out. Now Chase can just cruise to victory lane. This spotter lets him know he's out of fuel. Chase Elliott comes out of turn number seven. The crowd roars. They're going to see for the first time Chase Elliott win in the Monster Energy Cup Series. Right now, at the Dawsonville pool room, the bell is going to ring. They ring the siren when Bill Elliott won, and now they ring the siren when Chase Elliott wins. And look who he's looking at. His dad's up on the spotter stand. I'm out of gas. And he runs out of gas at the furthest place away from the start-finish line. It's a hell of a birthday present right there, A.G. Bubba Wallace going by. A good friend, Chase Elliott. You see the 78 out of gas. He ran out of gas coming into turn six. Still was able to finish second. Kyle Larson showing his pleasure. Everyone going by, congratulating the 22-year-old. I need a push, baby. I need a push. Huh? Chase Elliott wins in the Monster Energy Cup Series for the first time. He's still clapping inside the car. That moment 
presented by Sunoco, fueling victories all season long. He's going to celebrate a long time now. He'll need a push in, but it'll be the greatest push he's ever had in the Monster Energy Cup Series. Let's go to the winning crew chief. Oh, take a look at this. How about this? A seven-time champion. He's going to give him a push. His teammate at Hendrick Motorsports. And again, as I mentioned earlier, 250 wins for Hendrick Motorsports. And the 250th coming at the hands of Chase Elliott. How about that? Well, I mentioned it was going to be the greatest push he's ever had. Coming from one of the greatest of all time, Jimmy Johnson. Giving him a shot. Gustafson and what a celebration for Chase Elliott who finally after so many tries gets that first career win the emotion you could hear him after the checkered flag he was emotional in there Max Pappas in the coach for William Byron an incredible moment for him to win at a road course just like his dad Bill for, did for his first career win Chase, I got to know the emotions of those final few laps that the 78 was trying to catch you. Holy cow, what a uh, what a thrill. Um, Callie, I don't know what to say, just so thrilled, so emotional, so uh, so much relief, you know, working on three years and hadn't won one and uh, came here with a great opportunity today and I uh, was able to get it done. But just thank you, thanks to all the fans, you guys are rowdy after that checker flag. I hope all my buddies back home are ready to get rowdy tonight because it's going to be a good one. What did your dad say to you after the checkered flag, or what did he say to you during the race? Uh, well, he was really just spotting, you know, and, and doing kind of the normal normal spotter deal. Uh, and he was pretty encouraging those last couple laps, which was certainly helpful, and, and uh, was able to get it done. Were you worried about the 78 and the mistaken one? Were you thinking, oh, I've given it away? Yeah, I started to wheel hop, and I, I knocked it out of gear to, to not spin out. And uh, luckily had a big enough gap where, where he couldn't get me, but what a day. You mentioned these fans. They all stood up when you won that stage. They cheered so loud. I don't think there's any question you're going to be the most popular driver this year. That's the coolest damn thing I've ever seen. I just want you all to know that. And uh, very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And let's go get some more. There you go, the fans. And as they told him on the radio right afterwards, the first of many. I believe he's got a date with his dad, Bill, in Victory Lane. Mr. Hendrick calling on the phone right now. Chase Elliott, your winner at Watkins Glen. The door is open now. He got his first win. Look out. Chase Elliott, the 2014 Xfinity Series champion. We saw a year ago he got into a tuffle with Denny Hamlin at Martinsville, and we said right then, his attitude had changed. He became hungrier, and we saw it today. The hunger was in the eyes of the driver of the nine, Chase Elliott. He gets his first career Monster Energy Cup Series win. You made a Put a spell on you. Yeah, because you're mine. With Chase ATMs. 
Serena can now grab cash on the go, all with the tap of her phone. No card, no problem. Life, live Serena's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. Welcome. Hi there. So what do you look for in a vehicle? Sleek designs. Performance. Dependability is top on my list. Well, then here's some vehicles that deliver on that. Whoa. Wow. Oh, jeez. That's our truck. It's our truck. And there are cars. That's my Chevy. Chevy's the only brand to have earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs three years in a row. Awesome and proud. Oh, you know, it's like a dynasty. It's impressive. NerdWallet.com knows that it can be hard to know. Uh... Sometimes options seem similar. Uh... And you don't want to wing it. Uh... But when it comes to credit cards, uh... you can breathe easy. NerdWallet has all the info you need in one place to help you find the lowest rate, most cash back, or sweetest perks. Nothing beats knowing. Find your next card today at NerdWallet.com. And here it comes. Austin Dillon wins. There's the ace. Bubba Wallace in second. The big contest. Watch into the bottom of the track. You don't like that kind of racing? Don't even watch. The champ is back in victory lane. How special. The 28 seed. You saw the emotion out of Chase Elliott. There's no telling where this win can carry him. Talk about momentum. That young man is ready. And what a race Martin Truex Jr. put on, putting the pressure on Chase Elliott to get this first win. Dave caught up with Martin. So Martin climbed out of the car and you can tell he has worked hard today. How tough was that to try and beat a guy who was going for his first win? Yeah, it's tough, you know, I mean, I uh, gave it all I had for sure for our guys and everybody at Toyota and Five Hour Bass Pro and all the partners, you know, I gave it, uh, I gave it everything I had every single lap and, um, you know, I could catch him. Just wanted to get close, I'd get loose and fall back. I, I was too loose all day. Traffic made it worse for sure. So he had the upper hand there at the end. We were a little faster, but hats off to him. You know, he did a great job and uh, put his car exactly where I, I needed mine to be. And I couldn't get in our air and I was sideways. So he did a good job. Congrats to them on our first win. And, uh, you know, we ran out of gas last lap anyway, so I guess it wouldn't matter. But uh, proud of my guys and proud of the effort. And, uh, you know, love coming to these road courses. That last lap, I think you saw an opportunity to pounce. Uh, how was it that you couldn't quite get there? Yeah, I got I got sideways in the inner loop and about went through the grass and lost five car lengths and then that's how far back I was there. You know, if I hadn't slipped there, I'd have been able to take advantage of him there for sure. I'd have got by him, but I still would have ran out of gas. So he was going to win regardless. So good job by those guys. Congrats to him. Last year's winner, second today. We talk about how much it meant for Chase Elliott. Look at the frustration for Martin Truex Jr. He's won four times this year. This, <laughs> this isn't wouldn't have been his career first. He's a champion. This is how hard they battle. That's how much work he put in. Well, he was fighting, and that's what I love about NASCAR is these guys, and we've seen it with teammates that have fought each other for the win. We've seen it with fierce competitors that are battling every single lap, and that's what we saw there. Chase Elliott, he absolutely won this race by going out and taking it and winning this race on his own and then holding off some of the best in the sport. The magic of Watkins Glen continues time after time after time. It doesn't matter with mistakes, pit stops, strategy. Those are all great storylines, but in the end, it's a battle in the closing laps between at least two, if not multiple drivers. And once again, that's what we saw between Martin Truex Jr. and Chase Elliott. And you heard Martin say, if I wouldn't have made that mistake, I could have capitalized on Chase's mistake. And that's what's so great about this racetrack. It's so fast. There's so much momentum, so many sweeping corners. One mistake gets multiplied. Well, it took a push from Jimmy Johnson to get him back onto the front stretch, and then his team pushed that car all the way into victory lane. But all smiles on the face of Chase Elliott as he's ready to climb out. You see Ryan Blaney in there congratulating him. Bubba Wallace also congratulating the young man. There's Kyle Busch. Look at all the smiles. William Byron all coming into victory lane and now Chase Elliott gets the opportunity to celebrate for the first time with his cup team. Chase Elliott 
has made his way to victory lane as a cup driver. Your dad's here. We saw you ran out of gas, put everything out there on the line. How does it feel to make the victory lane as a cup driver? Man, such a, uh, thank you, thank you. Such a relief. Uh, <laughs> Oh, such a relief, man. Um, just, uh, man, had some kind of some hard times to get here and, and uh, made me learn a lot personally and, and um, had to have a good group around me to keep pushing me and, and keep making me realize that we weren't in those positions by accident. And uh, it was funny, this morning I woke up and I watched the video. Kirby Smart had a speech about uh, <coughs> being having pressure is a privilege and I had that on repeat this morning on the bus just thinking about it thought we had a chance today and and wanted to make sure that if we were in a, in a position try to capitalize and we did and uh, what a day but just thanks to all my partners uh, Sun Energy won't be on the car this weekend Napa Auto Parts uh, Chevrolet Mountain Dew Kelly Blue Book um, Valvoline and Hooters and all the folks uh, that support us this is a hell of a day a special thing to have your dad here knowing that he got his first win on a road course you got yours he wasn't eight just seconds too. right eight <laughs> yeah. seconds he wasn't just here with you he was here helping what does this moment mean for you two well just uh, I'm glad to have me I wish my mom was here too uh, she doesn't miss many races my mom my grandma and, and uh, some of my biggest supporters and biggest fans so Looking forward to getting home and seeing them, and we're going to have a hell of a night, I can assure you that. Bill, this Georgia boy right here, this is what he's been waiting for. You're here. You are a part of this. How does it feel? It's, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, I'm sitting over there and kind of letting the lap, you know, laps wind down, and I'm thinking, you know, what's going to go wrong now? And, you know, we held it together, and lo and behold, Truex runs out of gas. So, you know, it was, one, it was just luck went our way today. It was so smooth. That last turn one, though, overcooked it just a little bit. What happened in that moment? Yeah, so I started wheel hopping, and uh, I had two options, knock it out of gear or spin out. So I chose knock it out of gear and, and missed the corner, and, and luckily I had a big enough gap at the time to where Martin wasn't next to me. And I felt like if I could just be in front of him, you know, before the S's, that typically you can gap a guy up through there just because it's so fast. And, um, man, what a day it worked out. Just a uh, big thanks to everybody who makes this happen. This is a a dream come true and and um man just proud to be here a long time coming chase ellie enjoy congratulations thank you chase ellie in victory lane as a cup driver guys rick turn one at Watkins Glen has has got some of the greats we've seen jeff gordon spin out tony stewart spin out was well, right here oh man you see right there the nine overcooks the corner you saw the rear tires hopping what kind of composure out of a young race car driver to know his only option knock that thing into neutral to somehow keep that car on the track and then alan gustafson his 43rd birthday today on top of the pit box what kind of a birthday gift can be delivered 99 starts i've known alan for years he has worked with the greats he's worked with kyle bush jeff gordon mark martin so many great race car drivers and he has just relish this opportunity to work with Chase Elliott, and I know it means as much to him to win with Chase as it did for Chase to get his first win. Jimmy Johnson, the big hug there after giving him the push back onto the front stretch. But virtually every driver, we didn't see every driver, but I would say that almost every driver has either come up or when they drove by showing the elation of what just happened for Chase Elliott, getting that first win very popular and that tells you what kind of talent and what kind of respect chase elliott has from Absolutely. everyone in the field right these guys race against him they know how he races they have gone into battle with him whether trying to pass him or be passed by him so when you see the likes of kyle bush and all of those drivers come in that's not by chance right they have seen the opportunities they have seen the maturity you heard chase instantly he knew it was eight seconds right he didn't have to go <laughs> search for that stat right. he knew He's been playing the cards close to the vest, but I think today we have seen how much pressure was on that guy to finally do it. And today he did it with not just anyone chasing him, but a champion. That's right. The defending champion in the Monster Energy Cup Series in Martin Truex Jr. All right, let's bring in the guys who were out calling this race all the way around the racetrack. We've got MRNs, Sirius XM Radios, Mike Bagley in the S's. Guys, what'd you think? Well, I tell you what, Rick, we will have no shortage of conversation on the morning drive on Sirius XM and NASCAR Live on MRN this week. It is an unbelievable environment around here right now. Watching the race fans just lose their minds at the end of this race just willing Chase Elliott to victory lane. He was able to get there, and it was so, so, so intense at the end of that race. What a pleasure to watch Chase Elliott hold off 
a series champion and get his first ever win and make the playoffs in the process. As you said, it was a pleasure. It was. It was a real honor to be able to watch those two guys battle out there at the end. And I just had so many emotions uh, watching Chase uh, try to put together those last few laps, knowing that just only 400 yards from where I'm standing, his father, Bill Elliott, is watching him run those last few laps and willing and hoping his son uh, to victory. Worried about fuel, worried about Martin Truex Jr., worried about the com competitiveness of his own race car. So just so many things going through Chase's mind, I know, and there's a lot of, like you said, a lot of relief. Love seeing all the guys coming up to him after the race. That lets you know, I mean, Chase is a really, really good kid, a great guy, a uh, good friend of mine, great friend to all the other drivers. They really respect him. They know he's going to be a superstar in this sport. It took him a while to get to this moment where he can celebrate his first win, but he's definitely going to have a lot more to come. Yeah, my, my heart rate's still up. I got to tell you, that was an intense last few laps. You know, you got a champion coming to take that win from you, and you held him off. Not only that, but think about Martin Truex Jr. You won two road courses in a row, so you had to beat one of the best road racers to get your first win. But I also go back to years ago, watching Chase Elliott race late models, you know, in Georgia and, and Florida and Alabama, he and his dad, you know, going to those local short tracks, sweating and working and doing all those things. All that work came into play today. And we put so much focus on the opportunities that Chase has had through the years and not being able to close the gap. But you know what? This stuff's hard to do. And when you finish second eight times and then get that win, that's not that unusual, really. So I'm just proud of the effort that we see this young man put into it. He's worked hard to get here. And I'm proud of Hendrick Motorsports for, for giving a young guy like that a chance and for that Elliott family who's given so much to the sport. So a great day, a great battle. And when you're going to win your first race, beat one of the best, and that's an awesome feeling. Well, Jeff just mentioned it. Hendrick Motorsports, a 36 race winless streak. That's unheard of out of that organization. To finally get number 250 for Rick Hendrick, that's a big delivery for Chase Elliott. If anyone has ever run down a dream, it's Chase Elliott. It's time now for the post race show with Chris Devota, Kyle Petty, and Dale Jarrett. And this is a good one. These fans, of course, that 22-year-old driver will forever remember where they were on August 5th, 2018. The future of NASCAR, you're looking at it right now in victory lane at Watkins Glen. For Chase Elliott, it will always be Watkins Glen. For Kyle Petty, it was Richmond. For Dale Jarrett, Michigan.